Hypocrisy. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I'm your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. And with me today is a very special guest uh, that some of the chat may know, but if you don't, I'd like to introduce you to him, Mr. Brandon Caserta. How you doing, man? Yo, what's going on? I'm doing pretty good, man. How are you? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I had a surprising day. My day was supposed to be this like weird, cool day where I wake up and watch the U.S. Uh, beat Iran in World Cup and be happy about that. Uh, and instead, I spent it driving through a fucking blizzard all day long. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So, uh, so I was like gone all day and didn't get anything done. Uh, but, uh, cause yeah, I had a friend flying into the airport that I went to go pick up and their plane got diverted to Chicago from the blizzard. So that was nice. And, uh, so then I had to wait around for the plane to actually show up and then drive back. And I live like two hours from the airport. So it was a mess, but anyway, that's enough about me and my, my terrible day. <laughs> How was your day? <laughs> Dude, so like pretty much everything that could break that could prevent me from doing what I need to do broke. So like <laughs> pull into work, busted brake line, right? Cars like <laughs> screw you. I'm like, damn, well, I'm just going to have to literally risk my life to drive 40 miles back, you know, and just like pull over and dump brake fluid in there or whatever I got to do. But my brother was like, no, dude, don't do that, you know. <laughs> Well, you know, we'll find something, right? So I wound up waiting like three and a half hours for a freaking tow truck to come pick me up. Wound up getting back at like 2 a.m., take my car to the shop with no brakes. And then I'm like, okay, you know, just going to switch a line out because that's what I did before, you know, just switch a line out, you know, put some more fluid in there, you're good to go. Uh, so I wound up hanging out with like some super weird hillbilly fuds for like four and a half hours <laughs> in like this random garage in the country, bro. Like I'm literally in the butt fuck nowhere, Kentucky. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like I'm chilling here in this random garage with these guys and you know, they're cool or whatever, but like we're just talking like second amendment stuff and they're pretty much like fuck Joe Biden and all that. And I'm like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. If you're in a garage in the middle of Kentucky, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude like, like let I'm me tell you what one. andy Bashir rhymes with <laughs> right right i'm the only one that talks like this like all of them have the most deepest southern accents ever <laughs> nice yeah at least so you had some fun. good company for it yeah yeah it was chill man they were nice uh okay so let's let's introduce you i guess to the audience um you are, uh, well, your name's Brandon Caserta, but people may know you more by your story, um, which was a pretty big story that happened over the past, uh, what, what was it? Was it 2020 or 2021 when this stuff all unfolded? Yeah, it was, it was right after like the lockdown stuff happened in 2020. So it was October of 2020 that I got arrested. Right. And you were arrested for allegedly plotting to kidnap the governor of Michigan, uh, Gretchen the Demon Whitmer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I need to know this story because I, uh, when I first saw this story, I'm like, oh, well, that's, I mean, that's unfortunate. Uh, I disagree with lockdowns too, but I mean, damn, is my first reaction. But then as the story unfolds, it's like, wait, how many federal agents are involved in this thing? Cause like I'm, I'm counting chess pieces here and I can barely find any citizens at all. And, uh, and, and suddenly this becomes, in my opinion, uh, a complete fucking scandal um, for the government. And then um, as the, as things progress, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's the one guy who like uh, he pleads guilty right away and, and folds and then um, you and another guy stuck it out and uh, you guys were or you were found not guilty. Like you're completely acquitted of this. And yeah. um, are the other guys still on trial? Like it, what's what's going on with them? So like, you know, out of the totality, it was weird how they did it, because out of the totality of people, there was like 13 people who got arrested 
only six of us faced federal charges. And then they split it up with like two other state cases in like different counties in the state of Michigan, you know? Um, And they're trying to like make it all seem like one conspiracy. I think they're just trying to make their odds better of, of getting those convictions, you know, but um, yeah, Ty Garbin, he immediately uh, started cooperating with the government. And then uh, me, Dan Harris, uh, Barry Croft, Adam Fox and Caleb Franks, you know, we're like, Hey, we're going to go to trial right before we went to trial. The first trial, Caleb Franks folded and decided to cooperate with the government and testify against us. Um, so ultimately it was just me, Dan, Barry and Adam who went there that first trial. Uh, there was a hung jury on right. Adam Fox and Barry Croft. And then me and Dan were the only ones who were acquitted. And look, dude, I just saw the, uh, the what the jury came out with with the whole um oath keeper guys you know and like the seditious conspiracy january 6th thing right and then i'm seeing all these other cases you know that really are kind of similar to mine and everybody is getting convicted bro and it's like oh my god dude like i can't believe this is happening it's it's an absolute miracle that we got the jury that we did because you know, it's a miracle that I'm even here right now to expose these criminal ass bastards for what they what they're doing to American people, you know? Right. Because the that that's the thing that is, um, you know, we have this cute notion that in principle is, well, you're innocent until proven guilty. And you ask anybody who's going through the process if they feel fucking innocent for a second when they come out in orange jumpsuits and shackles when they don't get to do anything when they're stuck in a jail cell. And uh, and when the juries hear their uh, hear the charges and immediately convict before a single word of testimony has been given, because they're like, well, I mean, the government wouldn't bring uh, wouldn't bring seditious traitors in unless they had really good evidence for it. Or I mean, oh my God, these guys were gonna like just thinking of the the charge. These guys were gonna kidnap the governor of a state, like that was their plan. And of course that's correct. Like of course these people need to be convicted. So it's uh, and then you're fighting the uphill battle to prove your innocence. And it's supposed to be the other way around. The government's supposed to have to fight the uphill battle, but the game's stacked in their favor. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, unfortunately, with a lot of people in society and look, this is why, like, you know, people make material on YouTube and try to bring information forth into the public consciousness to kind of wake people up and get them to realize what's going on, because Unfortunately, a lot of people out there, just like you were saying, you know, if someone gets charged with something and the authorities arrest them, their first inclination is to be like, well, they wouldn't even go after them or arrest them if they didn't actually do something right. Yeah. You know, so that's where they come at it from. And then, you know, they have this, you know, belief in authority that makes them believe more of what that person in the costume is saying or with that position um, rather than just a, your average regular person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, for me, um, and I've, I've told this story on the air before, not this story, just kind of this personal change that I had to make when I, uh, when I graduated law school and started doing criminal defense work is when I would pass people on the road and this is like just a simple thing you pass someone who's pulled over and, and my first thought was always, well, what did that person do? Right? Like why did they get, what did they do to get pulled over? And then uh, I had to kind of just shift that a little bit to what is the state accusing this person of doing? Because that's a way different question. And it changes the assumption of guilt uh, into one of innocence and saying, no, the state is now asking questions of this person there or they're investigating what's going on. But that's way different than what did this person actually do? I have no idea if the person did anything at all, but we we're so conditioned to trust into authority. And I mean, it's, it's bred in through into us through schooling and, uh, and through popular media, television, every book, everything is written from the pro or from the uh, proposition that, the authorities are good and benevolent leaders who are just looking out for our best interests from evil criminals. It's like, yeah, the world isn't ever that black and white. <laughs> right, right. 
So, man, uh, tell me, like, I, I want to get into your story, but I want to, like, get to know who you are prior to all this. And then I, I would love for you to explain, like, how this thing unfolded, why, why you're not guilty, like, why you didn't try to kidnap the governor of, of Michigan, and, uh, and how, like, that process of getting from the accusation to the acquittal like played out and what that was like. So, but if, if we could start by like getting to know your background, who are you before this whole COVID bullshit happens? Yeah. So, you know, I'm just really, I'm just a regular guy, you know, um, I'm a machinist. Uh, you know, I work on steel. I have my hobbies. I like music, you know, I'm a metal head. So I, I play guitar, you know, no, I, I go I, to shows. I had you down as like a crooner fan crooner i don't think i've heard of them <laughs> no like <laughs> no like like uh frank sinatra and stuff just, oh yeah I'm just i can vibe with some of that yeah <laughs> dude it was funny i walked into the store uh like two days ago and this, the guy who worked there was like hey are you in a heavy metal band and i was like what <laughs> and i'm like no not right now he's like man you just look like you're in a heavy metal band i was like i wish i had one but there's no fucking good drummers anywhere, dude. Like, I need some blast beats in my life. What do you play? Do you play um, instruments? What do you play? Yeah, I play guitar. I'm a guitarist, but I like I can play bass and stuff like that. But I'm mainly just shredding. Sweet. I can't play shit. Like, man, give me one of those. Give me a maraca or something. Like, that's it. <laughs> Heavy metal maracas. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you're so like, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, so you know, I mean, I played music for for most of my life I taught myself how to play guitar um stuff like that I mean dude I'm just I'm literally just an average dude who cares about freedom right I I took I made the effort to try to figure out the world you know I wasn't taught so many things that a lot of people aren't taught when they're kids of like why the world is actually the way it is like in the movie the matrix there was always that splinter in my mind where i knew that something wasn't right and it was like eating away at me you know and i'm like i have to figure this out because you know this doesn't seem right that doesn't seem right you know why why don't i get to keep my money like is this you know what i mean like well, what are those people actually using my money for like can we even trust them you know what i'm saying that doesn't even right. make sense to me right so you know, I'm, I'm digging deeper and deeper and, uh, you know, I'm reading people like Lysander Spooner, um, Larkin Rose, uh, Frederick Bassiat, um, you know, and, and, and I'm just getting deeper into this material, you know, Stefan Molyneux, you know, especially like his old stuff. Um, and I know some of these people, like people can disagree with or whatever, but I don't agree with everyone on every topic, <laughs> you know, but that doesn't mean I don't support some of the shit they say. Yeah, like uh, I think I think Stefan Molyneux's mom was just fine. But everything else of his <laughs> I agree with. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, he's always he always goes back to that shit. But but see, like I, I joke, but he he talks about a bunch of important shit too. And and there's tons of stuff where he's like it's like, no, yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on this, brother. I got it. Uh I'm a hundred percent. People can have good ideas and people can have ideas that we disagree with. That's fine. That's fine, but right, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. so you as long as oh, go ahead. As long as you care about freedom, you know what I mean, and you want liberty and you want freedom to to occur. We can talk about details and stuff later, but ultimately, we need to understand like what's the real threat to freedom. You know what I mean? It's it, is it is it really like just your your private criminal you know or like your cartel in mexico or something are they really running your lives and taking your money you know what i'm saying what's Only the when real I'm buying threat drugs. to rights <laughs> <laughs> right right i mean it's like you know what what is the real issue and 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 for me i'm a straight up anarchist you know um i believe in anarchism i think it's the most morally consistent philosophy uh and um you know the state is 100 percent violence you know it's a group of people that have a total monopoly on force right. and their human behaviors that they conduct in the world 
they're allowed to conduct those behaviors when nobody else is allowed to. So then you have to ask yourself, how do you obtain that right? Well, it's for safety or whatever, right? So, you know, that's a whole like philosophical thing. But, you know, I started um, obtaining a lot more uh, knowledge and information. And what I, what I really started doing was uh, taking on more responsibility in my life. I was actually growing into a, a man and uh, realizing like, yo, it, it's just, me. you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying, like, I have to make sure that I don't suffer. Like, yeah, there's all this shit going on, but, you know, and I might not be able to control it, but what I can control is my own existence. So I'm going to influence that and try to make it the best that I can. And that's when I started getting really into like self-defense. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, um, the best way for me to defend my rights is to totally know how to use a firearm real good. Yeah. You know, um, that's how I'm going to maintain my freedom and, uh, and, and arming myself with knowledge of what rights are, you know, what's the difference between right and wrong. You know what I mean? Like what, what are these behaviors that these people over here are doing? Like, let's break that down and see what someone else would think if, you know, another person did the exact same thing. Right. So I'm just, um, you know, going into this, going into this, I'm, tra- I'm training by myself. You know, I, I, I bought an AR and was training with that. And I bought a pistol and everything was training with that. Now, at the same time, I am expressing my beliefs, right? So there's, there's things that I was uh, saying that are pretty critical of, of police. You know, like I see brutality and I call that shit out for what it is, right. you know, and, uh, you know, I see certain policies that people might be making, um, and and I call for what for what it is. If it's wrong, it's wrong. So, and then COVID comes, right? And I'm immediately just like, <laughs> what? You're like, nah, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm like, nah. This this right here, like everyone's like, oh man, you know what I'm saying? I'm like everyone's about to die bro like just seriously (laughs) like we gotta (laughs) fucking do something or we gotta we gotta we gotta be safe bro like this whole conspiracy thing like it's happening right now you know i mean that wasn't that intense but uh uh you know they they laid me laid me off from work and stuff like that and i mean i pretty much got like a four month paid vacation right off work so i didn't i didn't suffer at all through the the pandemic or whatever you want to call it. Um, so really, I mean, I had no incentive to go after Gretchen at all. Like, I don't give a shit about her, dude. She's, she's another corrupt politician. You know what I mean? And most of the politicians are puppets. So why would I even waste my time going after some puppet who is, you know, being pulled by the strings of the uh, Zio International Bank Hotel? Or whatever, you know what I mean. I don't know if I can say that. We're on YouTube. <laughs> I have no idea what you can say anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> no, the banks. I mean, but the banks run the world. Because otherwise, here's the evidence that the banks run the world. Otherwise, we regulate the fucking banks. <laughs> otherwise we'd protect the free flow of money between two parties we can't do that anymore right because now if you say the wrong thing if you call out the wrong person suddenly your bank account becomes inaccessible and all that cool digital money that you have becomes fucking worthless you can't transact if you can't transact you can't eat right exactly and when you can literally print money out of thin air i mean you're god dude you can buy anyone or anything that you want you know? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so you're a guy, you're a machinist, you're living life. You're starting to learn about freedom, um, reading about it, studying it. You decide, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to defend myself. I'm going to defend my mind. And, um, and then you, uh, then COVID hits, COVID hits, you, you see the lockdowns happening immediately. Red alerts are going off. Cause you're like, okay, the monopolists on force are suddenly telling us that we have to stay inside. We have to do this. We have to do that. You can't go to work. You can't go to school. You can't go anywhere uh, unless you get a hall pass from, from Gretchen or from whoever, like for me, I'm in Minnesota, man. So it's Tim walls 
who is taking uh, the Gretchen Whitmer and uh, and and what's his face over in California. He's taking their crash courses and how to be a fucking tyrant. And um, and they just lock everything down. And so you're immediately like, OK, uh, I, I know how this works. And so you said you started talking about it. Where where are you talking? Are you talking on YouTube? Are you talking on Twitter? Like what? Where are you getting your message out during this uh, during this early time when you're like trying to sound the alarm? Yeah. So around that time, I was making a little bit of videos on YouTube. Um, not a whole lot, but I was mainly like posting on Facebook and stuff. You know, I wasn't trying to like, be like a, a big influencer, although I would love if that were to happen. Um, you know, if I had the equipment for that and, and got that rolling, I would eventually like to, you know, kind of get kinetic truth going as a platform. But I, I kind of felt an obligation to point out some of the hypocrisies that I was noticing because, you know, I've read the whole thing. It's a long ass book, but I've read some of the Gulag Archipelago. You know what I mean? I've, I've read some of these, you know, if you read history, you see, you know, it's what they call it is the totalitarian tiptoe. You know, it's like these incremental, yeah. um, moves forward and then you don't realize it until like you know seven years later and like oh my god like i'm totally disarmed you know what i mean i have no money like what the fuck happened how do we let how do we let this happen to our country you know mm -hmm. um, um and and i'm seeing this so you know i'm a single guy at the time uh i'm living by myself um you know, I'm not like a really like I don't like go out like I like to party, but I don't like go out and party and hang out with friends all the time. You know what I mean? I like sit at home and read or play music or research conspiracies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the kind of shit I do. Keep it, keep it chill. But uh, felt like, felt like I kind of needed to reach out. You know, like hey man, if like really I didn't know if I could go back to work. That was kind of the main thing. The main thing when they said we had to go home, I wasn't sure if I was going to go back to work. So my first thought was like, I need to acquire some food. You know what I mean? Right. I need to acquire some sort of uh, way to access food and to filter water just, just in case, because I'm not sure uh, if I'm going to be able to go back. And, you know, the neighbor guy down the street, if he hasn't prepared at all, you know, he might want my shit and take it by force. Right. So, yeah, that's the that's the real fear in um, in a shutdown is when 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 the society we have established for better or worse uh, does collapse, then um, it, the the danger is the transition time. Right. Like I think it, I'm not personally an anarchist, but I, I'm I'm a libertarian. So I guess adjacent. Uh, I, I want like the minimum amount of structure to keep keep me from having to shoot everybody. But um, but I think even anarchists agree that like once you get into anarchy, it can be this self-regulating system that works on on a series of established sort of moral principles that people adopt. But the transition from an ordered society into that becomes very dangerously disordered for a period of time. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think it's definitely possible for that to happen. Right, because it's like all of a sudden there's no police and there's no, uh, there's also no food. And so now they go, okay, well now I need to get food and there's no police so I can go grab it from Bill because I know Bill over there has a bunch. And so then they go to Bill's house and, and try and take the food uh, that, that because they don't have any, because people haven't prepared because we, we have, we haven't built uh, culture out in the way that, that kind of goes to that self-sufficiency that you were talking about. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, you know, the state has so much control over, you know, agriculture, uh, water, uh, shelter, land, like all those things that human beings need. Dude, it's illegal to collect rainwater. Men with guns will show up at your house like, yo, bro, you can't be collecting that nature shit. <laughs> That's the grounds <laughs> like, water, you asshole. Like, what? Right. It's illegal. <laughs> You can't do it. It says it right here. Okay, man. 
Yeah, well, um, and if you, I mean, you think about uh, just just the act of if you want to gather food, um, what you you have to have your own land to grow specific crops or or trees that produce various fruits or whatever, and then you have to pray that like the right animal comes along that you're allowed to kill and eat, which is not like the good ones. <laughs> like a deer wander, wanders onto your property. You don't get to just shoot it because if you just shoot it currently and you don't have the proper license, they come by, they take your gun. They may take your house. Uh, poaching laws are so ridiculous with asset forfeiture that they can take your truck. Uh, they can take your garage. Like if you have some detached shed that you, you store stuff in or you clean the deer in, they can confiscate that and just haul it off and auction away your shed, which is, it's insane to think about like how much control the government has over your ability to get food in, at the very basic level. Um, but yeah, it's kind of terrifying. And then, yeah, <laughs> regulating the amount of water you could collect with a bucket like Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that was like, I, I was just kind of thinking about that stuff. I was concerned about having, having, you know, food and then, uh, you know, obviously I was concerned about self-defense as well, but as this, you know, as the politicians use coercion in order to create safety, right? That's kind of the philosophy is we can generate safety and order through physical violence. Like, and we, we might not necessarily like, use violence against you right now, but we'll tell you that's exactly what's going to happen. And like, you know, that if you don't obey, like we're totally going to use violence against you. So it's better. You're saying you from, violence, you're right? saying government uh, has that, right. that threat of violence. Right. Yes, right. absolutely. So, so when I'm seeing this stuff happen in, you know, during 2020, right. COVID-19, I mean, that's, you know, you have to do this, you have to stay in here, you have to, you know, blah, 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 right? Um, that was just, you know, it was it was sketchy to me and I knew, I knew where that stuff could lead. So I wanted to kind of, I, you know, I'm always defensive. Like, and, and that's what I want to explain to people as well is like, you know, when you're talking about certain things, it's always good to pro like make sure you provide the context because that's a lot of the reason why they targeted me and went after me and went after, you know, pretty much a lot of these people, right? Because they're really talking, a lot of them are talking about defensive stuff in a hypothetical situation that might happen in the future, right? It hasn't happened, but it might happen in the future. So you're having a conversation about it. They take that as anti-government rhetoric and then use that against you in court by providing their own con uh, context and keeping the context, the real context out, because there's a, a many ways that, you know, the prosecution is able to do that. You know what I mean? Is to keep things out right. of federal court to where they don't actually get in. Okay. Um, so, so I like to try to always provide context with defensive stuff. Yeah. I, I want to, and I, I want to get into this because I, I want to like get into kind of the facts of the situation, uh, like your perspective, like, uh, with these other guys, how do you meet them? How do you know them? How do you guys associate? What are you talking about? Why is the government uh, getting into this? How the feds like fully get involved in this thing? I want to do that, but I, I do have a couple like chat. Uh, so my chat's able to send in questions and stuff like that. Um, so I got a couple yeah. of those to, to read real quick um, and then we can move into the next one. And the first one's like, this is, I hate the chat so much. They're, they're awful <laughs> bastards. So the first one you'll have to bear with me on let's embarrass Nick in front of the edgy anarchist balls or no balls. It's <laughs> the question. Uh, and we can skip it if you want, or I can delve into explaining what that means. He wants to know how big my balls are. I'll put them bitches on camera right now. Bro. Straight up. <laughs> okay. So clearly a balls man. We're good. That's fine. Uh, we can move on. Mostly gluten says audio is jacked, but Brandon is nailing it. Yeah, there's some audio interference that's happening on occasion. I, it's, but I don't think it's actually just audio. It's like your, uh, like your internet is like, because it, it's like glitching a little bit and just there's like a static sound. I don't, I don't think it's the audio, but I don't know if there's a fix for it, so I haven't brought it up. 
But uh, but anyway, he says Brandon okay. is nailing it. Like you sound fine ninety percent of the time, but then there's these like statics, and it's almost like the the internet skips a beat or whatever, which could just be connection issue. No big deal. Yeah, I, I saw my screen flicker a little bit, and it on my way home from work, dude, it was like pouring rain and lightning, so maybe that might have something to do with it. I apologize. Could be. Or they're still watching. <laughs> totally, bro. Totally. <laughs> I mean, they 100%. definitely are. <laughs> They've got dude, they hate me so mad. much. <laughs> You know that prosecutor drank seven bottles of Jack Daniels when you were oh, acquitted. Yeah. Just like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I can't believe this. Don't want, don't want her. Uh, okay, and then one more. Um, Kate of the Swiss says, ask the guest if he's, if he's heard of Seven Arc. Have you heard of Seven Arc? It's, I think it's a band. Definitely, it definitely sounds like a metal band. No, I haven't. If they have blast beats, dude, like I jam it. You know what I'm saying? So if you guys know bands with blast beats, uh, send it my way. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna copy and paste this into. We've got a private chat. Or oh no, I'll send it to you. I'll send this exact question to you so that you have it. Um, and uh, and that way you can look this song up because he says. Uh, have tell him to listen to VII Arc Ira, so Seven Arc Ira. Uh, if he's a true metalhead, this tune will make him smile. So I'll, I'll, okay. I shot it, this exact thing to you on Twitter, so you can check it out later. But um, With respect, respect. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about this sort of thing. You 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 mentioned something which was like the natural break point for me is. Um, you said you guys were taught or you and, and maybe some, I guess I'm guessing the other guys who are co-conspirators uh, accused co-conspirators were having conversations somewhere that involve hypothetical situations. What happens if this goes down and then that's what the feds are using to try and make this case that you're out to, to kidnap the governor. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, people's opinions of politicians, um, you know, working class guys. So, and I and, think politicians and look, should not... fear the populace personally. I think I think that's a yeah. big problem with our society is that the politicians don't fear the people anymore. And I think that's what uh, that's why January 6th is getting such a heavy response is because for for like a couple hours, they actually did. They were afraid like that big fucking bug at the end of Starship Troopers. Right. <laughs> it's afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because usually they're insulated. You know what I mean? These are these are people in the ruling class, you know, that that are insulated from um, how people talk and act in kind of normal society. Right. Like, I mean, you should have heard how the prosecutor was picking out so many of these statements, you know, that's like, dude, that shit. My uncle Barry says, like, you know what I mean? On Thanksgiving dinner, like that's not <laughs> right. You know, people talk shit, dude. Like we say nasty things. We don't mean every single thing that we say, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, and they did a lot of that, a lot of that kind of stuff too. Sure. So you guys are talking. So, uh, I, I guess I can kind of contextualize this in my experience. I know like during COVID and actually like before COVID, I'd be in several uh, different chat groups on different platforms. And um, like in one of them, uh, some former military guys, and then the, for whatever reason, they let me in, even though I'm, you know, not. Uh, but we're just sitting there talking and, and they started talking about, okay, when the civil war happens, right? Like what, what do you do? Like they're strategizing. It's like, these are just random guys, but they're strategizing like, okay, uh, you go to Philadelphia or whatever, because there's really only like one or two ways in and out. It's easy to secure. There's all this different stuff. And I'm like, y'all been thinking about this a lot <laughs> to me, but they're having conversations like this, but they're not actually planning to go take over Philadelphia, right? Like that's not actually going to happen. These are just some guys talking right. in, a, in a group on social media. Um, so is that kind of what's right. going on with you guys? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what's going on, you know, because in, 
you know, when you, when in the firearms world, there's like, you know, there's certain types of people, you know, these people plan a lot, you know, they talk about consistencies a lot. They, they're prepared, you know, they have this system set up for that scenario, that scenario set up for the blah, 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 right. And they're always talking about the next thing and, and you can get really into it. You know, it's kind of fun um, to be honest. So when you have, and especially when they're ex military, right. So you got guys who have actually been in combat, you know, my brother, he was, uh, you know, he was in the army, you know, my dad was in the Marines. Like, this is like how people talk, you know, um, right. in that type of environment. And for us, it was like the very, the very loose, group like you know they they kept calling me a wolverine watchman dude i was never a member of wolverine watchman number one wolverine watchman sounds lame as shit okay i would never be in- <laughs> hey the like, wolverine watchman bro like, yeah okay i hear you but let me counter with that sounds really really fucking gay <laughs> it, yeah it, i mean it is right so you know, I only, I only train with those dudes for like two days, sure. you know, like once, one time a month. And then I went there like a few weeks later and, uh, got some, got some guns on their property. I, when I, when I, uh, came into this group, you know, I met Joe Morrison, who was like, I guess the leader of the Wolverine Watchmen or whatever, you know, it was his property in the beginning. That's when, that's when the FBI came in was like, dude, that dude, Joe and, um, you know, Pete Musico and Paul, Paul Billar and Urban Urban and all of these. That's when, that's when the, that's already, already been in an investigation. When I, when I showed up, I was essentially like the perfect, perfect character for them to select. Like oh, you know, this guy, this guy doesn't even do anything. Look at what he says. Like he's, you know, we could, we could take his, make his opinions. You know, he says he's an anarchist. He's always, he's always criticizing police, you know, and, and, and all of this stuff. It's easy to twist um, um, certain things because it's not like my ideas are totally mainstream. You know what I'm saying? Like to talk about the hypothetical possibility of ever using defensive force against a cop is like a sin compared to some people. You right. know what I mean? Like you can't me, talk about that at all. Let me have you let go of the mic. I I think I'm wondering if that's just okay. kind of like overpowering, but I I don't think it's an issue like with it picking you up. I think if there's an issue, I think it's on the connection side. But but we're good. No, because yeah, and and I have these discussions uh, quite a bit about like use of force against cops because some, you know, some States have different laws about, can you resist an unlawful arrest? How much can you resist an unlawful arrest with the uh, Derek Chauvin, George Floyd thing? People are like, well, why didn't someone just come up and Spartan kick the police officer off of the man on the ground? It's like, well, like, because right. if George Floyd doesn't die and you've kicked a cop now, George Floyd's arrested and you're arrested and the cop didn't do anything wrong at that point. Whereas if George Floyd Floyd dies, he gets convicted of murder. So it's like you prevent the murder, but now you've assaulted a peace officer and they don't see it as preventing a murder because he's not dead at that time. Right. Like, and he may have gone on to die from fentanyl. I don't know what happens after that. It doesn't really matter though, because now you've kicked a police officer and you're going to prison. Right. And there's no way around it. Right. But in, in other states, if you see like a, an excessive force charge or an excessive force going on and a reasonable person would, would think so, there are some ways to resist it. Minnesota, there's not. In Minnesota, there's you do not have justification to use force on a peace officer. You just don't. Who's in the commission of their duties and is properly identified, which if you're if you're arresting someone and you're in uniform, you're basically covered. And, and even if you're doing the, like the wrong thing. Uh, that's to be decided in court later, not by someone on the street doing a kick. But in, I think, New Jersey, you have a much broader right to resist an unlawful arrest. So, like, I get into these conversations, too. But I'm not getting arrested by the government. Thank God, because right. I don't want to deal with that shit. Right. And, 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 dude, look, like, during this investigation, while the FBI is literally investigating me, I got pulled over, like, three times. I had three encounters with law enforcement. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? 
Right. And look, I carry a firearm with where I go, where I go. I don't go anywhere without a personal protection device. So when I am, I may, I may disagree with a lot of the things, you know, government agents do. Right. But, you know, do I understand that, Hey, there are certain times where like, I just posted a video the other day where some fucking psychopath in the hood is like, has a knife up to this lady's neck and a slit her, a slit her throat. And you know what the cop does, bro? The cop drives right up there, dude, pulls out his pistol and blasts that guy and wastes him. You know what? That's exactly what they should have did was kill that guy with the knife who's trying to murder that lady. I mean, you know I mean? they there are situations where they do good things and save right. people's lives. You know what I mean? And but I understand the dynamics of the state. I'm not trying not trying to disagree with with like, hey, you know what? You shouldn't have pulled me over. Um, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to you're trying to fish some for some stuff. No, you can't search my. Head. I'm not giving you my consent. Um, I disagree with it philosophically, but do I, do I uh, fight for this force? No, like I comply with what they're doing because there's this force against me if I don't comply. You know what yep. I mean? And that's why I don't have a criminal record. That's why I own totally legal firearms. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't have felonies or misdemeanors or anything, right? Because I don't do anything wrong. Now, people may think my beliefs, they don't like them or they don't like my opinions. I don't really, I don't really give a shit. You know, right. if my opinions hurt your feelings, then, then you get some, to get some different feelings, bro. You know, and I was kind of like the character that they selected, that they could kind of put as a person in this theater they created, you know, because when we were talking about certain conversations that people have organically, what the government's doing now is they're putting these agents and these informants in the mix of a group that they already know are going to say some of these things because they're online monitoring people every day, bro. They have so many FBI agents online. It's insane, dude. That's literally their job is to look at your Facebook and stuff. You know, right. when, I, when I was arrested and they're taking, they're taking me to jail, I'm hearing them joke about it. Like the agents are like, oh, dude, this shit's cake. Like, yeah, I just said, computer, computer, like they just let me in the group, dude. It's hilarious. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, By the way, uh, to all the feds watching, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, I know, bro, what's up? I know you're out there and, uh, well, welcome to the party. Here, let me let me hit a couple of these questions real quick. Um, Jane A. LeBlanc sure. says he is so hot. Hey, you got a fan. <laughs> she looks like a cutie too. Uh, next, she is definitely a cutie. Oh, do you know her? Yeah, I know her. I know oh, her. okay. <laughs> there you go. A little bit. <laughs> Nexus says. Recent IBS news. Uh, Kino Casino is cucked. Cog won, but is still an e-beggar. Who's Ralph? Jim's not dead yet. I want to find that. I want that final arc. Nick met Trump. Bitwave and Streamy are still dead. Locals is trash. It's Dave Rubin's grift anyway. Uh, Flam is still a weeb. Oh, thanks, Nexus. Bob Piffle says, good, Brandon. Uh, glad to have you here on Nick's channel. Nikki is a good man, an ally in thought and soul. But I got to ask, Desert Island Quiz. Favorite food you could not go without, favorite beverage, favorite album. And then keep on keeping on, Brandon. Okay, so favorite food you could, like, so you're on a desert island, you have one food for that you, you cannot go without. You have to have it. What is it? Double bacon cheeseburger with an avocado. Oh, okay. With the avocado. That's a twist. I like it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, favorite beverage? Uh, lemon water, bro. Straight lemon up. water? purified water with a drop of lemon in that yeah yeah like i have one of those uh my fridge has one of those infusing things in it so i i yeah you just shove different fruits in there that's good stuff i like it uh okay and then your favorite album right now i would definitely have to say uh fear monger from Beneath the Massacre. That's the heaviest metal album out right now. <laughs> it sounds Uncontested. pretty fucking heavy. <laughs> do you uh yeah. do you drink or anything like that? Like I drink whiskey. I'm just curious. 
Oh, yeah, dude. I'll drink whiskey with you. I love whiskey. Do you want to get some? We drink it tonight? I'm poured a glassy uh, yellow spot. It's up to you. I mean. I, I don't have any right now. I don't okay. have any. <laughs> well, so, sometime. We'll meet in a garage in Kentucky and pour some uh, pour some whiskeys down. <laughs> um, okay. 100%. All right. Uh, okay. So moving on. So this is, so this is interesting. Um, so you've got a group and uh, of, of guys and then the feds start coming into the group, right? Like that's, that's what ends up happening. They're monitoring everything that goes on. I agree uh, that this happens and I'm sure they've got, uh, well, we know that they, we know that they've been influencing Facebook and Twitter because that stuff has come out lately uh, around the misinformation shit but um we had you have to have an idea that this has been going on for a while i'm guessing they have algorithms to pick up on what's going on in private chats looking for keywords and stuff like that that have anything to do with government militarization anti-police anything like that at all so these guys start popping in uh to the chat so um Tell me how this works. Cause I, obviously you guys don't know that these are federal agents who are coming into your chat, right? Like, so how are you guys like bringing people in? Was it like a private group? How does this function is my question. So pro so pretty much, you know, uh, uh, Joe Morrison and like a couple of the other guys, they had a uh, wire downloaded the app wire wire. And you know, we were all kind of of a simil similar mindset where, you know, we want our we want our information protected. We don't want people to steal our identities. Right. And we don't want the government to monitor us. And it's not because we're doing, we're doing anything very serious. It's just I don't like the idea of knowing that, um, um, you know, Facebook is like selling my information to some, like, some like Chinese advertiser or whatever. Right. Like. Their co bulk collecting data. Edward Snowden told us this years ago, and he wrote a book about it called Permanent Record. Um, yeah. And so, so we we kind of essentially this isn't the Wolverine Watchmen. This whole group. This isn't like a militia. This is a bunch of regular ass working class guys who might be libertarian over here or anarchist over here or someone might have even voted for trump right like you have this kind of loose affiliation of guys between like 23 and like 47 48 who get together and meet up sometimes like once a month and shoot their firearms right and uh they're into a chat to a chat room where people literally are shit posting all day long, posting memes, talking about guns, talking about bitches, you know, what, what do do? And then what happens is you have government agents in there who are like, so, so like, yeah, what about it? Let's plan that if that happens, you know what I'm saying? And they find, they find, they find the dumbest person, person they can to try to get them to say things and things and, and work and work. I mean, and, 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 and but was Adam, Adam Fox for the government. That was Adam Fox. And that was Barry Croft. And that was some of these other guys uh, that they were able to get them to, to, to say some, some pretty dumb stuff and to drive in some areas that, you know, were, were, were pretty dumb. Sure. So um, refresh me on this. Which one is the guy who folded uh, right away? Was that Adam Fox or was that? No, that was, that was Ty Garvin. Okay. So Adam Fox and uh, Barry are the, are the guys who are still like their stuff still going on, right? Nope. So Adam Fox and Barry Croft, they got a retrial federal trial. They got convicted with saying that they were the leaders, right? So like, okay. So this, they got this convicted. Home yeah, yeah, they got Adam and Barry, they got a hung jury on the trial that me and Dan got acquitted on. Right. So they retried them, um, just them, and uh, they got convicted on all charges, which totally blew my mind. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. But, well, um, they got the, you know, 
the feds won jury selection that day is what happened. Yep. I mean, exactly. The, it's a, uh, it's a fucking mess. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So uh, basically you guys have a chat room on this app called wire, right? Like that's what you are. Yep. That's what you're using. You have this chat room guys just talking like guys. Uh, I, I, uh, I may not look like it, but I've been in a couple of these groups. Very fun. I'm, I'm not like a gun expert, but I like guns. And uh, I like, as as a lawyer, gun guys like to bounce questions off of lawyers. So, um, you know, I've done that, hung out with the guys, go up to the private shooting range, do some firing drills and shit like that. It's a good time. And then you get done with that. You talk about beer and women and whatever. Uh, it's all good stuff. And so then these uh, these guys start infiltrating the group. Now, I don't know how Wire works. So how are people getting into, like, this group on Wire? You said uh, someone was inviting them in. Um, is, are they, like, inviting them from Facebook? Or, like, where are they picking them up? How do they – because I've never even seen the app Wire. I don't know anything about it at all. Yeah, so it's – I mean, it's pretty much like Telegram, right? But Telegram, I believe, is is much better – Sure. Um, I, I like communicating on that. Um, but you know, that like this group that we're in, right. It's dude, it's like a telegram group. Like that's what it's, that's okay. what it's like. So it has you know like, saying? so it has, is it's the app has its own ecosystem. People are out there and then, you know, they find communities and pop in just like on telegram or Facebook or anywhere else. Well, kind of, right? The, the only difference is that, is that um, and you, call them, you can search a group that you might like and join and whatever. The way Wire is set up is like you have these ad that, that set up different groups, right? So if you're kind of associated with us, um, you know, and you, show, you showed up at a training or whatever, you know, you could uh, get invited to like um, the Armory chat, right? Or the, the Bonfire chat. You know, there's these different chats that are kind of set up where there's different people in there. You know, there's a main chat. There's all of this different stuff, but it's privatized. Now, the the informant got her because, because ultimately, like, the informant is the leader of this group. You know what I mean? Like, when I showed up, you know, I'm, I didn't know at the time. I showed up, showed up, and I was receiving training, advice from a government agent. You know what I mean? Like tell you, this is how you move around this, this or in, or in, you know, this is, this is how you should aim when you do this or whatever. Right. You have this guy who has combat experience who, who actually does have real combat experience in the world, you know, right. and he's, he's in this group training these people, but essentially um, he's just looking to try to try to psychologically manipulate the person, the person that he can, he can think of. And their whole justification for doing this was that their informant said, Hey, I was just, I was just scrolling on Facebook one day and came across this Facebook group, the Wolverine Watchmen, and said, Oh, you know what? I'm a super elite operator combat veteran. I want to go train with the sniper kills. <laughs> right. I want to go train with a bunch of young, dumb, like, you know. Uh, dishonorably discharged army guys or something, you know what I'm saying? Like who have, have a whole lot of super good skills. Uh, yeah. I want to go train with them and, and, and find like uh, minded people. Right. So I guess he, he says he joins this group. The first, the first day he's in there, someone's talking about throwing Molotov cocktails in the cops houses and shit. Right. And they're saying, yeah, Holy download Jesus. this application. Right, like download this application on X Hunt so you can find a, a property owner is a property, and if he's a cop, then you can go there and 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 off him. Right, this is the government's saying this is their story. So so, in court, when they're cross examined about it, they're like, okay, did any of the defendants have this application on their phone at that time or any or when they you arrested them? No, they didn't. Okay, so. You don't have any evidence that anyone ever even had that app or downloaded anything off that app. No, no evidence. Okay. These statements that you're saying my client made about doing this to police, and client, you know, using this application to do this. Um, um, do you have any of those statements or anything like that? No, they have, they have nothing. They have none of that stuff. So their whole justification for doing it, they don't have any evidence for 
they're just like, well, these guys are posting memes that are, you know, a schematic machine gun, um, but they don't actually have any real machine guns. But look, they're talking bad about police and they say they want to do violent stuff. So, like, it doesn't matter. Like, we didn't really have a reason to invest in it, but we did anyways. And, and this is what they were going to do. But ultimately, the government was the one that created and fabricated everything. Yeah, it's uh, and it's it's amazing because everything you just described is just speech. Like to criminalize it is speech crime or thought crime. It's like, uh, oh, there's a schematic of a machine gun. So does it fire bullets <laughs> with one trigger pull? No, that's not a machine gun. Then that's just a schematic. It's nothing. It's it's words. It's lines on paper. It's uh, there's nothing there. And uh, well, they want they want to harm police. You can actually say you want to, I don't recommend it for obvious reasons uh, because it will get taken out of context, but you can say, I want, uh, I, I hate all police officers. I, I want them all to be beaten in the streets or whatever. You can say those things. Now there are certain times and places that you can't say them, right? Like if you've got a big crowd and you're on your soapbox and you're like, we need to kill those fucking police right there and there's like three cops like that's bad don't do that very very terrible <laughs> but you can have some you can have some really uh you know you can have some really dark opinions about what should happen to authorities and government um all the time uh like like i want john mccain to die of brain cancer oh shit yeah I'm sorry i went back in time no, <laughs> it's like, but like you can have those. Uh, sorry, I tell a lot of like I, I make shitty jokes all the time. It's my life. Um, but uh, you can have those bad opinions. That's that's the whole point of freedom. It's it's freedom is worthless if you just protect what's popular and acceptable. Right. Like that. That's the whole thing. But it sounds like what you guys are talking about isn't even unpopular or unacceptable. Lots of people. Uh, you said it's not a mainstream opinion. And I would agree it's not mainstream because mainstream people don't think about what happens when the government fucking collapses. Uh, and and it's crazy when you when you really get down to the fact that, like, we were run, one roll of toilet paper short of every Puerto Rican woman stabbing everybody in a Walmart. Like, we are we were so fucking close to societal collapse over toilet paper during COVID that it got embarrassing. Like, and that was just one thing. If you, if you shut down the trucks that run, that move product across this country for a week, we would be brought to our knees immediately. And, and we would see way worse than any Black Friday sale has ever seen. Any scrap of anything that could be used to wipe an asshole would, be, uh, would become the most precious commodity on earth. And it's, it's weird that that's what did it. But, and we all saw this like little glimpse under the sun. It's like toilet paper and Purell because everybody got retarded and forgot soap existed. But it's like, like these two things became gold and, uh, and they were selling um, at my store. They got a shipment of toilet paper at this little local grocery store. And they were limited to like, two roll two individual rolls of toilet paper per person and it costs like nine dollars <laughs> like, <laughs> it was like i was i was lucky because i i have a uh, toilet paper on like a recurring amazon thing and we order way too much so we had a backlog just stacked up in a closet and i was like well damn that was fortunate like that wasn't planned that just happened and um it, it's crazy how close we actually came to really seeing things spill into violence. And it was always like, this is what annoys me about COVID. It was always just enough to walk that edge and keep people from really like going crazy in most places. But we were, we were damn near, damn near it. You do it with gas. Oh my God, it's over. Uh, you couple, couple different items, gas, um, various grains. Like if you, if you shut down wheat, we're really fucked. If wheat gets uh, out of hand, um, you do it with, uh, yeah, something like toilet paper or, or some other reusable thing that people need daily and, and they'll go crazy really fast, but that's not, right. yeah, we're, it's, it's not mainstream, but it's, 
most people aren't thinking about that, but tons of people actually are though. And it doesn't mean that anybody's yeah. like, well, now we need to kill everybody in the government. Let me grab my gun. <laughs> Right, right, exactly. And, and that's, those are the people that they're trying to go after to make look like that. That's, that's the problem because right. people who realize how dependent we are on this structure, um, and then they, we don't want to be dependent upon it, right? So we make, make choices and alter our life in certain ways, uh, uh, whether it's knowledge or training or, or prepping or, you know, whatever you want to do, or you have a podcast or whatever. Um, and then they want to make those people seem like they're crazy, crazy. And they're just, you know, either, either like racist or, um, you know, crazy and they don't know what they're talking about or they're a lunatic or whatever the case may be. They want to, demonize them in the public view and then because you know the federal government essentially has unlimited resources they're buddies with the federal reserve they are already collecting trillions of dollars from taxation they can print however much they want want so if they want to go after a couple you know clowns that they don't really like they're, they're like you know what maybe we should just kind of make something fun out of these guys over here for some political influence. You know what? Well, you know, there's not really going on, but let's just hit them right before the election. You know what I'm saying? To kind of yeah. eyes uh, and demonize Trump a little bit. Let's say, let's say these guys are Trump, right? They're Trump guys. You know what I'm are saying? Are you a Trump and, guy? And they did. Were, were you a Trump guy or are you a Trump guy? No, the, I, I, I squashed that whole narrative so fast because they tried to say I was the leader of this group when I got arrested and that, you know, Trump said, Trump said liberate Michigan and we were Trump soldiers, right? And then some news organization like plays this like random video I made in my room where I'm like, fuck Trump. He's a fucking tyrant piece <laughs> of shit. You know, you know what I'm saying? And they're like, I, well, I guess that wasn't it. I didn't suspect an anarchist would be a super fan of Trump because uh, for whatever Trump is, his rhetoric has lots of hints of authoritarianism in it. Like it always has. It's, it's one of the things that bothered me so much when he ran in 2016. I'm like, look, dude, you kind of sound like you're going to use a lot of government force. He didn't end up using as much as I anticipated but like when he was talking in 2016, I'm like, you kind of sound like you're going to go after journalists. You kind of sound like you're going to stamp on speech. You kind of sound like these things. Uh, the one thing I, I really wish you would have done, because you mentioned one of my heroes earlier, and I think this is one of biggest uh, Trump's biggest failings is I wish you would have pardoned Snowden. Like, I, I think uh, we, we need we need some somebody to go ahead and recognize uh, what a service a person did by pointing out just how fucking corrupt and unconstitutional the government monitoring of the internet actually was and being right and being vindicated by appeals courts and the Supreme court itself. Like we need somebody to come in and do that. And, and there, there are elements of the, uh, the freedom movement that I really wish Trump would have embraced. But I think he had, I think he had some advisors who uh, really were against those types of things and kind of embrace those authoritarian roots a little bit there personally. But yeah, like <laughs> the idea that an anarchist is going to be pro Trump is pretty funny. Like when you really think about it, it's like, not only are you asking him to support an agent of the government, like uh, uh, the state, the state executive of force, but you're asking him to support one who's been, whose rhetoric is openly authoritarian. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Probably, I guess. <laughs> Right. He, he, he lost me number one, right. When he got into office, but number two, you took away bump stocks, bro. You're not pro second amendment. Get out of here. Right. With that. Yep. And uh, again, one of, one of Trump's big missteps, the bump stock ban is, is crazy. And a lot of the COVID stuff, Trump didn't implement it at the national level. He let, he let Biden try and do that later, but pushing the vaccine, pushing the narrative about it was a big Trump initiative and uh, what we're on YouTube, so I have to be very cautious talking about this, although I think they loosen the rules a little bit. Whatever you think about the vaccine doesn't change the fact that Trump was very pro-vaccine. He was instrumental in getting it out there and pushing the narrative that lots of people, if not everybody, should take it. Um, 
that that is not the that's not the personal move I want from a politician. Um, and and I count that as one of one of his missteps. I, I think that actually contributed to uh, what happened in 2020 in a way, because um, I, I think he yeah, lost some yeah. of the people. And, and, I, and, and I mean, hey, like if you want to get vaccinated, that's fine. You know, if if you've done research and, and the research that you've discovered, you know, leads your mind to make the decision that you want to get vaccinated and you want to, you know, your kids, you get vaccinated or whatever. Look, that's your choice. And I'm saying that's that's your choice. That, that I'm not going to use force against you for that. I choose my choice. OK, my individual choice is to not get it. So. I don't like, and that was one of my main concerns as well. You know what I mainly talked about? Like, like most of the evidence that they used against me in court, me talking, me talking about using defense force in case mandatory vaccines came. That was like, was like my main thing because I'm like, dude, I will literally prepare myself to live in the woods in December. I will not get vaccinated. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, they used a lot of that um, uh, against me and my, and my attorneys. Like, what does this have to do with the governor? You know what I mean? Like, okay, he says some things about police and, you know, he doesn't want to get a mandatory. But he says if the government straps him down and tries to, you know, do this, that he's going to, you know, use force or retaliate to do, to do with agreeing to kidnap the governor. You know what I mean? It, it has nothing to at all at all. It's just convict this guy of of what he said, what he, what he believes, or you know what he says around a campfire after he's had you know uh, uh, two pints of whiskey. You know I mean, I mean, like, come on, bro. Look, I <laughs> if I'm judged, uh, <laughs> if I'm judged, what I've said after having a bunch of whiskey, I'm in fucking trouble, man. <laughs> that's right, all, that's right. All I'm right. <laughs> uh <laughs> okay so so you guys have this group it starts getting infiltrated how do we go from uh how do we go from this place where you're you guy you guys are talking people are popping into this group to suddenly you're all fucking under arrest for like this crazy uh, conspiracy to to kidnap. Uh, wait, let let's do this first. Um, did you ever intend to kidnap the governor of Wisconsin of Michigan? Absolutely not. No, I didn't think so. Because that, yeah, like, yeah. it's a crazy idea, right? Like the the idea that uh, that any group of people, even even a rather sizable, like the amount of force you would need to apply to kidnap a governor what? is insane. And not to mention that, but if I'm not mistaken, um, was, did the plot involve like kind of like a takeover at the Capitol building? Was that, was that like the, the alleged plot? You know, you see, th there was, there was talk, right. About, um, you know, and this is kind of some, some stupid Fox was like, you know, hey, if we want to send a message, you know, he was kind of like a hoorah guy, right? But he's kind of like the retarded, retarded kid around. He's like, yeah, you can kind of chill. You say some dumb shit, but I don't really care. You know what I'm saying? And, oh, yeah, let's get 200 people up at the Capitol and send some who's, who's really in control. And it's like, okay, um, I mean, I'm not going to do that. Like, I heard you said, but, but. Yeah, I'm straight on that. Like, I'm not going to do that. So they use these um, scenarios and instances and say, well, they were going to go do this. They, talk, they talked about doing that. That means that they were interested the whole time in actually planning something and using force, you know, against the government and, and, and doing all these bad things to politicians and stuff like that. Uh, it's just part of... That's just you know, saying those things and having those opinions about something just adds icing on the cake for them to use against you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's the, that's the whole thing. Um, with, with all of this is, is like you have, uh, you have the statements and the plot narrative that they've come up with. And then 
what their their intention though is to grab everything else, paint you as a fucking crazy monster, and then use the prejudice developed by their narrative to convict you to a jury because they want to manipulate yes. these 12 people into thinking, well, this person's insane. This person would use guns to control government. I don't know what they'd do to me. I mean, my God, I'm just like out trying to buy Cheerios or whatever. And they'd, they'd, they'd be storming past. And what if I got in their way? Like that's, that's what they want. They want people scared of you. And I bet they love the shit out of you. Cause you got the neck tattoo. You got the gauged ears you, and and they're like, no. oh, look at this motherfucker. We're gonna, he's he's gonna be scary. And like here, I'm talking yes. to you, and it's like, I love this guy. He's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm just like I'm like a teddy bear in a dragon suit, man. You know what I'm saying? That's just <laughs> a bad dragon suit or is. or a good dragon suit though. <laughs> oh, a sexy dragon suit. <laughs> well, according to that one lady, I think definitely. Uh, here, let me let me hit these two questions. Darius Harvey says uh, glad to have you back nick px ps fix his audio please i'm not going to spend a bunch of time on the audio it's going to have the glitches here and there like if we trying to sit and troubleshoot it we'll never solve it and it'll be a waste of a huge amount of time um i i think the audio issues aren't that bad they're mildly annoying but that's okay we're we're fine here uh crazy man jack says i didn't get vaccinated because my mama always told me not to take drugs from felons with legal indemnity <laughs> right uh no it's uh i look i didn't get vaccinated either i didn't get vaccinated um uh, in part because fuck the government <laughs> if you tell me to do something i'm gonna say no uh in in part because fuck the pharmaceutical companies like you guys sit here and fist me all day on all these meds and then you're like oh here's the one that'll save your life and it's completely free subsidized by the government also you can't sue me if you die from it no thanks like i'm i'm cool with that uh, and then and then the final thing is the final uh thing, final thing uh, uh whoa that was cool now i heard myself but now it stopped it's good uh the final part of that is like um also just i got covid like i got it it was shit for like seven days it was really bad it was it was kind of bad for 10 days but for seven, it was like really fucking bad. I was sitting in bed. I uh, felt like I got hit by a bus. And then, um, oh, all those. The, by the time I got it, there were the the antibodies and everything, all the recovery stuff. And I tried to get that. And they're like, nah, you don't get that. I'm like, why not? I'm like, well, you don't have diabetes and you're not black. I was like, well, Jesus Christ. Like, what does that have to do with anything? Give me the antibodies. I need to go back to work. And uh, they wouldn't give them to me. So fuck all those people. So once I got COVID, I got I got my own natural super antibodies. Uh, hashtag pure blood or whatever. But like that was just a choice I made. I don't care if anybody else got it. And um, but but the idea that 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 means like I'm some sort of uh, they would use the statements that I just made though. Right. Like, cause I just said, fuck the government, fuck the pharmaceuticals to paint me as an extremist. That's, that's how they do this. So when do you get arrested? Like how does this process literally take place? Like that's, I want to know this story and then what happens after. Yeah. So that, you know, that was one of the weirdest experiences I've ever had in my life. I mean, Look, I know that I have uh, offensive opinions that, you know, things I say can, uh, you know, make people feel uncomfortable and, and whatever, you know, even, even, you know, law enforcement or whatever. Right. But, you know, to actually think I could get arrested for any of the things I said, like, I, I really didn't think that, you know, of course not. So, Why would you think you could get arrested for something you say? Right. Right. So, you know, I'm at work, dude. Like, it's just a regular day for me. Um, I'm at work. I order my lunch as I do every day. Double bacon cheeseburger with jalapeno, onion, and avocado. Where do you get it. this double bacon cheeseburger? Like, where? Where? Because <laughs> I don't know anywhere that, like, around my shitty town that'll do onion bacon and avocado except maybe the mexican restaurant 
<laughs> that doesn't, and I don't trust their cheeseburgers because I'm not sure that that's meat, that that's beef. So where do you get this magical double cheeseburger? Where is it? Right. So the place I was getting it at was called Bodie's Corn Beef. Okay. And it's this little, it's a little house in Plymouth, Michigan, right by the train tracks in downtown Plymouth that they, you know, turned into a restaurant. And it's a nice old little family country kind of restaurant. And they just have the most fire burgers, dude. So uh, I order that from there. And so like my my manager comes up to me, right? And he's like, hey, the uh, the shop supervisor, like the, the plant manager wants to see you. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. I'm like, he hasn't left yet? And he's like, no, he's still here, but whatever. I'm like, okay, uh, all right, whatever. So I go over there, or he like walks me from my machine. He's like, oh yeah, you just kind of go here, right? So he walks me. He's like, yeah, just go through this room. So I kind of walk into this, what would be normally be like a conference room where you would have, you know, tables laid out and, and, you know, someone might be doing a PowerPoint or some shit, you know, and then you have like offices as you keep going down, like, down in this hallway. So I walk in this room and normally the light would turn on automatically. When you walk up into the front office, you know, it's got motion lights. So if you walk up there to talk to HR or whatever, and get some shit taken care of, you're used to the light just coming on if the room is dark. So I walk right. in and that doesn't happen. And I look around and then the next thing, you know, dude, like 15 plain clothes, dudes <laughs> jump out of the wood dude dude and they're like get down on the fucking ground now oh my God. and they fucking tackle me down to the ground bro and immediately started digging through my pants and shit taking all my shit out of my pants you know feeling on my shit dude what, dude, what the fuck you know wait like, how you many of them grabbed your penis well? Oh, at least like two or three. <laughs> How many of them liked it? All of them? <laughs> all of them, bro. They were the, all big gay, dude. The they three who grabbed gay, it bro. and the four watching. <laughs> yeah. And and listen, I don't have anything against like, you know, homosexuality or whatever, but the agent no. who was tasked to monitor me, the one who probably set this whole thing up, he is a homosexual. So I, I know he probably had it out for me or something. <laughs> Well, I have it on good authority from the chat and the uh, the lovely lady who sent in the super chat that you are very attractive. So I, I think that that's definitely true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Right on. <laughs> that's public now. All right. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> yeah, so. Okay, so they, they tackle you. Uh, <laughs> they tackle you. They're, they're like ripping out your pockets. They're doing the pat downs. Um, wait, okay. So you say they're plain clothes. Can you describe, like, was there a standard fed outfit? Was it like dad shorts and a polo? Or was it, uh, what did they have the Ray-Bans? Like, what's going on? So pretty much they were just rocking the the skinny jeans. You know what I'm saying? With yeah. the, the tight, <laughs> like, long sleeve polo. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hey, hey. Oh my god. But here's what was here's what was fucked up is they had baklavas over their face. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they were covered up like get out of the So I'm thinking like these aren't these aren't even the cops, bro. Like I'm literally getting kidnapped by this fucking group of people. Right. It's like <laughs> they're COVID activists. That's what they were anyway. Uh, <laughs> right, right. I love it. so they're they're in skinny jeans and long sleeve polos. I'm definitely I gotta I gotta get I gotta update my Fed outfit because I only have the summer Fed outfit. I need the winter Fed outfit immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, bro. You gotta get like the you gotta get like the the hat too, just the regular hat that curves like a tan one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> Maybe it has a little rip in it or something on the bill. Yeah, you gotta have you gotta rips on the on the edge of the bill, like you've had it forever. Like some guy right, didn't just right. go by with a knife and just go like and just like, yeah, we're gonna rough this thing up and weather it for you. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay, so they they tackle you down. 
um, they, uh, they, they do all this stuff. They take you in and then what, what's going through your head, man? Like, so, uh, how quick do you call a lawyer? Do they put you in an interrogation room? Um, what's your life like? Cause this, this is what I want to, the reason I want to talk about this part of the story is because, um, people, there are people out there who will be like, well, I mean, what the, the feds just investigated this guy and the courts found that he was not guilty. So everything's cool, right? Like everything's fine. They didn't just completely fuck his life up. Uh, ev everything's good. So tell me about, um, tell me about what happens next. Cause to me, I go, okay, the process is the punishment. Like that's the whole, that's the whole way that this goes process is punishment. Right. So tell me about the process. Yeah. You're attorney, you're an attorney. So, you know, exactly. Um, you know, what I went through and, and what's going on with that. But what wound up happening was, you know, when they grabbed me, they, what was creepy, one of the creepy things that they did was they brought me outside and they brought me in out to this, uh, like black SUV, SUV, right. And yeah. in the parking lot of my work and I'm, I'm handcuffed. I got my hands behind my back and, and they're walking me out and some like, tall dude with slick back you know hair gets out of this fbi vehicle right and mm -hmm. and he's like what's your name you know and the guys that are holding me is like is this him you know like sir is this the guy you told us to get you know right and, uh i'm like my name is brandon and he's like yup it's him put him in the back <laughs> they fucking fucking threw me in the back of this unmarked fucking car dude I'm like, I'm totally about to get murdered right now. <laughs> we got him. We got him. So you're yeah. like, who the fuck are you? Are you yelling anything at yeah. this point? Like, no, I, no, at this point, I would blow a rape point, whistle or just, something. I mean, no, at this point, I'm just like, I'm kind of ashamed of myself that I'm about to get murdered by some group and I didn't even fight back. Yeah. You know, I just, I just let it happen. I'm like, fuck, like, fuck. So they, well, yeah, we, all when we get to a police stuff, station, right? eventually, like that's, that's gotta be running uh, through your head for a minute. Like uh, all this fucking defense stuff. And here, here it comes down to it. And this is a good thing, by the way, but at the time you gotta be like, and I didn't even pull my gun. Right. Like, God. Yeah. That. Yeah. Cause that's part of the humiliation the whole thing's about humiliation. Like they needed 15 guys. One, one like officer shows up with a fucking badge and you seem like the guy who's like, all right, I like, I didn't do shit, but whatever, like I'm going to comply. Uh, but instead it's 15 plain clothes guys. They tackle you. Uh, they rub your face into the ground. They, they, you know, put you in handcuffs, like a bunch of manly men. And they, uh, then they bring you out. Yeah, they have to make it um, a very fickle, cool thing, right? They have to make it look like a theater, which the government's really good at doing that, to be honest. And, you know, we got to the police station, right? And I'm kind of like, okay, well, I guess I feel a little bit better. Like, this is the government doing this. They're not going to murder me, which is nice. Um, and this isn't like some gang, some gang right? So... I can figure out what the hell is going on. So they, uh, they, uh, bring me to this police station, you know, and they, and they throw me in an interrogation room and they start interrogating me, you know? Um, you know, they told me what the charges were and I was just like, what? They were right. Like, yeah. It's pretty serious. Huh? And I'm like, kidnap. I'm like, wait, conspiracy to kidnap the governor. And they were like, yup. And I was like, for what? <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> Well, that's why you're here to tell us for what, you know, I'm like, but what, like, for what though? Like, cause like just fucker or just like, Oh no. What are you going to do? Did you say that? <laughs> you know, like, I, I mean, like, no, I'm just saying like saying like, you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. 
No, uh, but it would have been funny. Like. <laughs> said, what, why would I kidnap her? What to just fuck her or whatever? Like, <laughs> 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 oh, oh no! <laughs> As your lawyer, I don't recommend saying that. But it's kind of funny. <laughs> right, right. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Thank God. Right. Oh, what a disaster that would have oh. been. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, for sure. But yes, but yeah. Essentially, what they did was they just tried. They, they just immediately started lying to me, right? They just immediately started lying to me and then acting like they were my best friend. And that me telling them what they wanted to hear was going to make everything better for me. And they're going to go to the just gold, just golden letters and say, hey, you know what? You know what? I talked to this guy. He's a great guy. He worked with me. And you know what? The judge will just let you go probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so they they did that whole thing, which in which they do, and they tried to just get me to think that everyone else was ratting on me, that, yeah. I, like, that I really knew about this. And I'm like, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I never like, wait, this thing is serious. You know, like, I thought they went by her house one night. I thought they were going to TP her house or something. But like, I, but like, I didn't go there. You know, come to find out, they never even went there. They never even went to her house. Everyone says they went there. The government testified, the, the agents testified that they went there. They never went to her house, ever, bro. They, 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 didn't, they couldn't find it because the government gave them the wrong address. <laughs> you know, the agents gave them the wrong address. And right. mind you, like, behind the scenes of this whole thing, like, there's there's a total other conspiracy dude there's two conspiracies you know there's this fake theatrical conspiracy that involves like you know people like me and and other defendants right like you know citizen citizens and then there's this deeper conspiracy of fbi agents conspiring with each other in order to make millions of dollars, you know, in order to order okay. to raise positions and get and get higher political influence and money, you know, by demonizing certain groups of people and creating scenarios that look real so that they can get into those positions of government and exert more authoritarian control right. and get more wealth. Yeah, because that's that's like the that's the thing with the 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 hypothetical that totally doesn't happen. The bad prosecutor, right? Like you go after someone in a high profile case, for example, like let's look at Kyle Rittenhouse, right? That uh, Binger, who's the lead prosecutor on that case, thinks that he's going to get Kyle Rittenhouse. He's going to make it a, a case about race and race relations in 2020 in the post Chauvin world. And he's going to get this evil racist who murdered three totally black people. Uh, and then he's going to convict him. And then he's going to use that to run for governor uh, or to move for a Senate position or something like that. He's going to advance his critical or his political career at the expense of someone's Liberty, right? Like that's the idea. And that's the same thing with, with federal agents. And in a lot of cases, police officers, like I, I hate to do that because I know some good cops out there, but at the same time, it's like there's a reality that if you have good arrest numbers, if you have good conviction rates, these things translate to more pay, more power, more authority, and they're incentivized to do stuff like what happened to you. Yeah. And, and you know, something that was never able to get into court because the judge, um, you know, ruled against it. And I mean, there's a whole nother show, dude, we could probably do on like the, the actual behaviors of, of some of the agents involved in this case and even some of the people in the court. But, um, you know, one agent specifically I want to name, his name's Jason Chambers. He was the lead handling agent of the CA, the CHSs and the informants in this case. And he had this private business, okay. Um, called Exa Intel, E X E I 10 D I T E. Uh, oh, I can't spell E X E I N T E L. Yeah, Exa Intel. Anyways, okay. um, and what was weird, dude, is the logo was like this pyramid, right, with an I in the middle of it, 
and it was like mm-hmm. green and like all the circular stuff. It was this real like kind of dark. The Illuminati esoteric. thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, that- dude. Yeah. Um, and and you know, we discovered some emails and stuff like that that he was sending to people and 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 these are other agents he's talking to and other even business associates where he's like, look, I plan on leaving the FBI very soon. And look, I have the, the, the ability to reallocate money to where, where, you know, this can be a real easy position, right? Right. Like I can leave the FBI and all of my uh, um, skills that I've developed there and, um, things that I've worked on and everything like that, is that you use that for Exa Intel and find out anything about anyone that you want to know about, but it's in the private sector, right? And then I'll have contracts with, um, you know, other governmental agencies and provide actionable intelligence for law enforcement, right? So this is just like a win-win for him to create this, essentially yeah, this motherfucker yes. right here. <laughs> that that motherfucker right there. Hey, hey, and and he said he's in a Christian rock band that friggin' sucks, bro. He's not <laughs> even a Christian, dude. So wait, so this this FBI agent uh is owns this other company, is uh saying all this stuff. He's also in a Christian rock band at the same time. Yes, dude. Yes. <laughs> and 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 look. He had a Twitter account that was tweeting about our case while it was ongoing. So like in the summertime and like coming into the fall, this, this Twitter who says that they're CEO of, CEO of Exa Intel is like, Hey man, there's some big stuff coming up in Michigan. I'm telling you. Right. And they, they talked about other cases that Jason Chambers had worked on, you know, and said, yeah, we found these and all this stuff, this stuff, right. Like some Muslim terrorists or some shit. Is it so, ravaging? Was it ravaging the that's the account yep, at ravaging? Yeah, yep, I'm, at I'm looking ravaging. at a news story about it right now. As you as you say, it's fucking insane. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude. And and so there's this entire like thing where it's like, wait a second, this guy Jason Chambers is the handling agent. He's the rolling all the all these informants involved in this frickin' in this case. Like the pyramid goes up to him to him handling these agents essentially right so we're like dude obviously this guy has a financial incentive to push this conspiracy because there was because there was conversations between him and the informants or the informants like yo dude like am i wasting your time like am i wasting everyone's time like i just want to i was really guns really going on and jason chambers like nah bro just keep pushing just apply more pressure there's so many text messages where he's like keep pressure, keep pressure, you know, tell this person to go over here, say this to that person, literally organizing and orchestrating the entire dynamic of the whole situation to try to bring people together in order to make it appear, you know, like there's a thing, like you could make a film by people that don't even know you're filming them. You could make a movie. You know what I'm saying? You walk up right. to them, you're kind of filming around them or whatever. And you could make this whole movie and make it seem like they're doing one other, right? Other, right? I mean, same thing with audio recording. Like you can go around people and just record them saying shit and then put it all together and make it seem like, oh yeah, they were gonna do this dangerous thing right here. You know, that's exactly what they did in the situation. Okay, so you uh this this shit all goes down. You get arrested. You get processed. Do you stay in jail during the uh, the pendency of all this? Are, were you in jail the whole time, or did you get uh, did you get bonded out? What was the scoop? Um. Yeah, I was in jail the entire time. Fuck. How long was that? It was a while, right? Yeah, that was like eighteen months. That's fine. It's just 18 months. <laughs> Dude, it was horrible. It was so horrible. Uh, so tell me about jail a little bit. They had you in county, right? County lockup, I assume. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. they had me. Yeah, they had me. You oh, you went you went oh. all black for a second, but you're back now. I thought you were gonna be oh, the governor real? of Virginia. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, my homegirl was saying that the audio, my audio is trash. I want to figure out how I can sit, sit. You know, I don't want to be trash for you guys. But, um, yeah, I'm. I'm not sure how it'll fix because it's yeah, it's like skipping out and doing the static thing, and it's it'll like it'll go. Well, just a second ago, it went. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. Like it'll repeat the audio, but so I'm not sure what's causing it. Maybe yeah, if you maybe had different headphones. Pull out them. Try yeah, try just uh, taking out the yeah. headphones. Maybe we could just try it on the the phone audio. I assume you're on a phone. Can you hear yourself though? Right now, I can hear you. I can sometimes hear me. Let me see if I can change. What if I, what if I hook, maybe if I hook up to the headphone head though, it might, might, be, might be better than what was just happening. Are you on a, are you on an Apple device or an Android device? I'm on an Android. We could try. We could try. Oh, Cause yeah, it's, I mean, no, see, I just I'm heard on, the, uh, here, you keep talking for a second. Let, I'll, I'll be quiet. Okay, check, check, one, two, check, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, check, check, check. Wait, there was no glitching there, but it sounded like I heard a glitch in my echo earlier. <laughs> so we'll see. I, dude, they're fucking with the stream, bro, because listen, I got fire-ass internet here, dude. I mean, I'm on the stream through Firefox. I don't know if that's what's doing it. I mean, I, mean, I don't think be. that would, but. I got bars. full bars internet. I mean, I don't know if it's these headphones, the headphones I've used them before and it hasn't messed up. It's not the headphones because you, know? you just started glitching out again. So it's it's got to be something with the connection. Uh, it's very possible that it has to do with a bunch of fucking stupid feds trying to listen. <laughs> Guys, it's on YouTube. You don't have to wiretap us, you dummies. <laughs> you just watch it for free. Oh God. Yeah. It, they got to be sabotaging it, man. They got to, because I can't tell you how many video chats I do like every day. You know what I mean? With, with family members or friends um, and, and I'm video chatting or even making videos and uploading them and stuff like that. I never have any weird audio issues like that, you know, except when I'm doing like live streams about, about my situation. Yeah, I would I would not be surprised at all if uh if they they had some sort of tag on you, which is silly because if they not like this is public, it's not like private. We're not whispering sweet secrets to each other in the dark, like we're was broadcast to the fucking world. So they could just get in line. Feds, could you at least like send money? <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna pirate the stream. Just hit us up. Uh, speaking of that, S. Asp says he needs to have his house swept for bugs. Hey, listen, I already got something coming in Amazon, bro, for that. I, got I love it. it. I love it. <laughs> That's, uh, everything's getting sweet. Okay, so we were we were at the part where you were talking about um, you are talking about jail. They had you in county jail, right? Like for 18 months. And county sucks. Like uh, some people don't realize it. Most, most people would rather be in prison than in County um, because in prison, you have like, 100%. yeah, you have more opportunities. Uh, have you ever been, okay. Prior to this, do you have any criminal record of any like, no, no. Okay. You didn't nope. strike me as a dude who did, but I figured I'd ask. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'll tell you what, while I was in there, I mean, every dude waiting, waiting to, to, who, who, who took a plea, you know what I mean? They were, they were, they couldn't wait prison, prison. They were like, bro, I can't wait to get out of here and go to prison. You know, right. they wanted to go, they wanted, they wanted to get the hell out of there. That County jail shit is not where it's at. That's hard time right there. Yeah. It's, it's nasty. It's so tell me what your day was like. I mean, I mean, the days were just, it, it, it's some of the weirdest, um, feel I've, I've, I've ever had, you know, I, I had this dream of the go and it kind of acts how, how I felt in jail. And, you know, ironically, like the dream was about me in jail and I, 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 I was falsely accused for something I didn't do. And, you know, the dream 
was where like these these cops walked me in and then there was and there was this huge cylinder of water okay that they would throw human bodies into and they threw me into it sure and they drilled down the lid and i sat and and the whole idea the idea was that your first part of your stay in this prison was that you stayed a year in this freaking like that you know you know and you're underwater and they fed you intravenously um and i remember the feeling of getting that and everything and everything in my dream right but when i was up i still thought i was in prison like in real life and i looked around and i wasn't and i was like oh my god dude and and that's essentially what my my experience was in this county jail, I'm obviously, obviously like you know, play poker and, and, you know, I, I'm going to talk some shit and stuff, and stuff like that. But when you're in there, it would be different if I knew something wrong, something wrong. Right. Going up to it. I can be like, yeah, you know what, whatever, you know, but I'm, I know that I'm innocent. I know that I didn't do anything and I'm literally facing like the heaviest shit anyone could ever get, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, because what, so were, you, what was, were you facing time wise? It was it was a ton of it, right? Like you're looking at. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude, I'm I'm definitely looking at life. I mean, even I was the charge charged person out of the whole thing, and even my charge alone is just cons- just conspiracy to kidnap the governor of Michigan with the terrorism enhancement and all that shit, bro. I was looking at life if I lost in trial. And listen, the prosecutor came to me three different times for for deals, bro. He was trying to get me to cop for seven years and and six years. I said, I'm not taking a plea for anything, anything, dude. Not, you know, I'm innocent. I didn't do it. We're going to trial and I'm exposing you guys for your corrupt shit that you're doing, you know, because if this can happen to me, this can happen to anyone else, you know, and people need to be aware of that. Yeah, it's crazy because this is this is what people talk about because everybody says I have nothing to fear from the government because I don't commit crimes. You didn't commit a crime, but you had 18 years of your life just sucked away and thrown into a county shitter. How yeah, did absolutely, yeah, absolutely. How did that affect your job? Did you lose your job? Oh, yeah. You know, I lost, I lost everything. Like, literally, I lost everything. I lost all my money. You know, they took away all my fire, all my, all my gear, you know, all my equipment. Dude, they took my storageable food, my water filtration stuff. They took, they took all that. I lost my job. I lost, you know, they essentially um, turned my, my name into like, like, you know, total garbage, right? Like any, anyone who might have known me, you know, I'm in jail. They're thinking I'm some crazy terrorist and stuff, you know, you know, I might've saw at the gas station every day or whatever. Um, they tarnished my name. Yeah. You know, I immediately lost my job, like, you know, vehicle gone, all that stuff. So when I got, uh, you know, when I got acquitted, I'm walking out with nothing. Right. Right. So just a, I have to just a, well, glad we looked at you, bro, but you no, it turns out you're okay. Here you go. Right, right. Like, yep. Sorry, we. Sorry, we. We. we yeah, we. But, uh, but, uh. Hey, free, you're free. See you later, bro. Jesus. Okay, so how? What's uh? How? How'd you win? The other guys lose. What was the strategy? What? What was the difference between you? You and the one guy are out. You guys are good, but the other two guys they go to prison. What? what changed besides the jury? Was there any legal strategy? Were there any facts that were different between you? I mean, there, you know, me and my attorney, we had our strategy, you know, um, you know, he said over and over again, just, he's like, I don't see it because look, I understood the situation I was in, you know, it's not like, I don't know what the government does. Right. I don't, I don't know about the court. So, so it, you know, and, and I'm thinking to myself, Hey man, if you ever think I'm screwed, like you have to tell me because I'm not really like we know, I know, I'm, but, but, and, and he never told me that dude. He just said, you know what? I, I just don't see it. What's a green, green, 
I don't see an agreement for you conspiring to kidnap it just doesn't it doesn't exist there's not an agreement there you didn't go anywhere you think you didn't, think you didn't provide any itinerary for the group you're literally oh you come in the group and you pop in and you say some shit you know about cops or whatever right or you pop off about you know mandatory vaccines or something you know and then you're like well fuck it let's go train you know there's nothing is as far as anything criminal right so our whole thing was like this guy, is a, this guy is a total individual like he's not this like let's be in a group and do all this stuff right look he does his own thing you know what i mean like, yeah, yeah training, training yeah he bought his own hotel room he didn't stay with any of those guys you know you know look at him he says he's an anarchist no one here is saying that they're an anarchist you know, look, he doesn't follow orders. He doesn't do what anyone tells him to do. You think he's going to listen to Adam Fox? Come on, you know? And that was kind of our thing. And and every single scenario, and, and the government fucked up with social execution because they, they needed me to be in certain situations. They have me, have me there. I wasn't, wasn't there. I was never there. So they had to get their snitches to testify and say it was there, it was there that I, but they have an audio recording, right? But I'm not, but I'm not on the audio recording because I'm not actually there. So they have to have a okay. snitch say, oh, oh, Brandon was there and he was nodding his head up and down and he was agreeing <laughs> to the plot. Well, you can always <laughs> trust a snitch. I don't know what you're talking about. Criminal informants, very right. reliable all the time. It's not like they're doing it for crack money. What are you talking about? <laughs> Right. Yeah, he has no incentive to lie to maybe get a lesser sentence. Come on. Oh, fucking insane. So, uh, so okay. But so there's there is a difference though, because you say that a, a big part of your strategy seems to be that you're not part of any sort of organized group or whatever. But does that mean that Adam Fox was part of an organized group? Uh, and and is that that's a that's a difference, right? Like that seems to be a difference between you and him. Yeah. So you know, our entire thing was like we we did trap and trap and defense, like everyone kind of did, right? But yeah. me and my attorney, we focused on the no agreement and no overt act. There has to be an overt act, and there has to be an agreement, right? Right. Yeah. You know, for with Fox and those guys. Exactly. Exactly. So for those guys, they had to focus on. Well, look, had the had the intention to commit over this overt act. Like me and my attorney knew I did or did any overt act, right? So they couldn't prove that. But with those guys, you know, they did like do some stuff. Like you know, they rode in a vehicle. You know what I mean? With with an informant who lied to them about where they were going, but they did wind up driving by area, area they took pictures of and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. Shit that they didn't plan on doing, but they got caught there, you know, and the yeah. government's telling them to do stuff. So their defense was like, they didn't have the intention to do it. They were entrapped to does the government, the government actually, you know, uh, uh, cajole them and kind of decoy them. To right. get them to do those things. You know? Okay, so you you've clearly stated you never had any intention to kidnap the governor. That was. Do you think any of the like non-Fed guys did? Was there was there a hint of you didn't even if you don't name names? Was there ever a hint of like this actually being a thing for anybody? Do you think anybody had like a wet dream about it or anything? No, no, not at all. So just like, a complete that, Fed fabrication. Yeah, total Fed fabrication, like. People there, because of, because of like the lockdowns and stuff, like a lot of people talk shit about the governor. You know what I'm saying? Like it right. was kind of a regular topic. Like oh, I think she's a know, giant we, piece of shit. By the way, like I, right. I think she's fucking terrible. I think she's one of the worst uh, governors in the country. I think uh, the shit that she did violated Michigan law. Um, one of my one of my friends, Adam, uh, is part of. Uh, he's part of a Michigan activist group. Uh, like not that kind, but the kind that like that passes legislation. He, he used to work with a legislator out there, and um, I can't remember what their what their name is, but 
I've talked to him on a bunch of different stuff. And he's like, what Gretchen Whitmer did violates the constitution of Michigan. It violates the laws about spending, like how she handled the lockdown, not just with the lockdowns itself, but how she handled funding it. Like these are clear violations of law and they all just got swept up and they're like, ah, not government um, emergency powers. Governor can do whatever she wants. It was crazy. I, I think she's yeah. fucking terrible. Lots of people think she's terrible and good. Arrest me next. I'll pee in your mouth. Um, okay. <laughs> I have been getting some questions from chat and I need to know the answer to this. Cause I haven't heard this story, but were some of the accused sleeping with some of the feds or the informants. Yeah. So, uh, an informant, Jenny Plum, she was an, it was an informant that was attached to Barry Croft. Now, dude, so much of the misbehavior of the FBI and their informants come from people that were attached to Adam Fox and Barry Croft. I mean, they did everything they could pro- you know, do to, 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 to try to create evidence. You know what I mean? And, you know, Jenny Plunk would tr- travel from Tennessee all the way to, uh, you know, Delaware and pick Barry up and, and bring him all the way up to in, in, you know what I'm saying, into Wisconsin and, and all the stuff, you know, sleep in the same bed with him, hotel rooms, you know, who knows what they did, right? You know, right, you know, right, you know, you know. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can you can pretty much assume what adults are going to do. They're sleeping together, together. You know, they're traveling around the United States together or whatever, right? So, hold on. Yeah, there was. Hold on, though. No. Is this her? <laughs> no, no, that's no, that's her. That's not her. Hey, bro, but let's look. Is she this? Hold on. Work. Is is this her? <laughs> no, that's the governor of Michigan. That's Whitmer. That's, that's Whitmer. I'm trying to find a picture of this chick, and Google is doing me dirty. Dude, Jenny Plunk is hard to to um actually Gretchen kind of straight, straight right there. Like she's not really that fucking bro looking bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if she wasn't just a straight up communist tyrant, maybe. maybe. I might, you know what I'm saying? No, she looks she looks kind of good in this picture. That's yeah, a good looking yeah, Gretchen. But... Not a yeah, big deal. Kind of like got the cougar vibe, you know? Yeah. That's... Yeah, a little bit a little bit older, a little bit bolder. But <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to find this fucking Jenny Plunk chick. You're not gonna be you're not gonna be able to find her. She's she was totally hidden from from the trial, you know, you know. Okay. Like huh. You know, I might be able to find her, but she's 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 so well hidden. I just wanted that, to I know mean, who the who the chick is that can bring everybody to their knees or whatever. Like, who is who is the hot Jenny Plunk? Okay, you want me to describe her for you? Imagine <laughs> yes, I just... want you to do nothing more than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is Jenny Plunk, bro. Jenny, imagine, imagine like a good, a good old broad, you know, just like a, like she's a tow truck driver. You know what I'm saying? That's what she does. For <laughs> she wears, she wears animal panels, you know, tight jeans, hooks fucking cars up to trailers all day with chains. She's got long kind of curlyish reddish hair, you know, teeth, teeth missing here and there you know what i mean <laughs> so oh, she's yeah, a lady like, you're saying hey hey how you doing my name's Jenny plunk you want to go train and shoot some guns you know <laughs> give me the name in your number that's like on a scale of one plunk. to meth how bad are her teeth fucking three dude <laughs> like a three <laughs> Like a three and a half, you know. I'll give her that. Because, <laughs> like, this hey, but- is crazy, right? Like, th- this is crazy. Because you you mentioned, okay, you mentioned. I want to I want to be clear on two things. In an article I was reading, kind of getting ready for this stream, um, you did say, and I believe your attorney said that uh, 
that you believe that Adam Fox and the other guy should also be acquitted. The guys who were convicted, right? Like you, you believe that they're not guilty. Absolutely. All right. So I wanted to get that out in the open before I say the next thing. If I'm not mistaken, earlier in the stream, you did suggest that those two were the dumb motherfuckers involved in this thing. <laughs> yeah. And so they're yeah. the ones getting taken in by, uh, by the lot lizard. Yes. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> specifically. You know, Barry's no. teeth are kind of fucked up too, bro. He doesn't have very good teeth. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be careful with that because if you if you kiss, you can get stuck, right? If your teeth are bad enough, you get locked in there. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. That makes me feel weird thinking about it. <laughs> That's the goal of every show I do. I just want to make people feel a little bit weird thinking about something. <laughs> oh, wait. No, no, no. Hold that. on. Hold on. Uh, I have. Is this? No, damn it. The chat's moving too fast. I have an expert team of autists to figure this out. Is this her? Oh, dude, that's close. That's that's close. I. I don't think it's her, dude, but that totally looks like Jenny Plunk is skinnier than that. So this might just be a picture from a little bit different time, but that you think that that might be her? You know, I don't I don't it is, but I is, but I think the same type of woman. What about this one? You know? You think that might be her? <laughs> but that's that's it's that's the same kind of woman, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is my my locals chat is on the fucking case. They are trying to find her. Locals chat is the best chat on the internet. Ricadalaw.locals.com. If you're <laughs> looking for people who are like, bro, I'm gonna find this Jenny Plunk chick. <laughs> bro, listen, they're they're on point because they literally found two people that look fucking almost just like her. That's crazy as shit. <laughs> Oh, Fed informants are hilarious. Okay, so um, so I, I wanted to get that. I wanted to hear that story though. So y the one guy is dead. Like he's he's smashing the the Fed informant. Um, it's uh, and that's that's of course how this shit comes tumbling down. Like I can already tell you. Like that's that's their most valuable informant. The one who will go straight to the mattress for him. Like that's what you need. Uh, because because that guy. You know, maybe you don't know. Uh, my guess is um, that guy in post nut clarity spilled all the beans to all of the great plans that he had to try and impress this chick, right? Like, you know, that's how it's going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, that's just, I just it's it, it's crazy. So crazy because they had an informant that was doing stuff like that, and then they had another that's like, that's like. You know Adam Fox's surrogate father. You know, like father, father, I will guide you through life and show oh, you Jesus. the ways of training. You know what I mean? You're good. You're you're good at what you do. You know you're. You know what? Let's talk more of your ideas. Let's write your ideas down on paper. You know. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's write them down. Can you sign it? Can you use blood so we get some DNA off that too? I can use. Yeah. Just go ahead and write this. Dude, they literally, David. Bro, they literally did that. The informant drove Adam Fox up north, okay, and then told him to draw a map. So with gave him a pen, a piece of a piece of paper, said, Hey, draw an area, an area. And he was like, Okay, and drew it. And then he's like, Here you go. And he's like, All right, thanks. And then uses that and turn FBI and FBI and the FBI the evidence, the evidence against him. <laughs> you know, you know? Jesus. It's ridiculous. That's uh that's fucking insane. Um, here, let me hit some more of these questions. Uh the squid or questions or comments. The squid says one of the Android's more recent updates made Android incompatible with StreamYard the other day. StreamYard disabled my data, preventing me from connecting. So I haven't had that, but I've had StreamYard have issues with Bluetooth headphones. Chris Campbell, you're not the Chris Campbell. No, you're in New Zealand. Never mind. Is he using Wi-Fi? The glitches are rhythmic in nature every six seconds or so. 
As to be expected from watching stream video, if he's watching the stream himself, maybe turn it off or at least on the one. No, I don't. I don't think that's going on because you're just on a phone. Um, it's something else, guys, and it it literally could. There's a very real non-zero possibility that there is some sort of surveillance happening on this man who has been accused of kidnapping the governor and then beat the government. Okay, guys, like we just have to consider that as like not like not a joke possibility for like somebody who just talks about not paying taxes or whatever that I might do a stream with. Like this is a guy who actually defeated the government and is probably out there consistently trying to find the thing to get him back into court because it was really, really embarrassing. Like, and I made fun of the government so much when they got the hung jury. Like the fact that they lost your case is a fucking travesty, not because you're guilty, but because they should never bring a case about kidnapping a governor. If you cannot 100% win it without question, like it's just stupid to do. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and they know too, you know, I plan on exposing them even more. They know I'm not stopping. I got a, I got a documentary in the works right now. Me and uh, Radix Verum, uh, you know, Christina, we're working on a documentary, dude. We got film already. Oh, you, you know, know Radix? Got... Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, she, awesome. uh, I, yeah, dude, she's cool as shit. Like she, she got a hold of me right when I got out and, uh, you know, I talked to her, I went on her show a couple of times and, uh, you know, we kind of like became friends and stuff. And yeah, we're totally working on a documentary, bro. It's going to be sweet. It's called my Patriot mind's blown. Conspiracy. I had no idea you knew anyone that I knew. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Radix is cool. Oh yeah. I have to do a thing that really sucks because my bladder has turned into a woman. I need to step away and go to the bathroom real quick. So I'm going to play this like song for two minutes. Uh, and, okay. and if you need to go anywhere, you can too. But it's, uh, it's a song about me having to pee because this is the life that I live now that people write songs about weird shit. So I'll be back in just, <laughs> in, in just a couple minutes. Give me a second, bro. Drank a fair bit and then realized that his bladder can't handle the liquor inside. Leaving us with his chair while he rounds up the stairs, hoping the stream doesn't suddenly die. While we are waiting, we'll be laughing at you. The drinking along is what most of us do. Okay. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Sorry about that. Yo. It's you not. Yeah, I can hear you. Are, are we trying All Bluetooth right. now? I I put it in because I got to charge my phone. My phone battery is about to die. Oh, word. Word. 
Um, so yeah, it, it's not metal. The song is not metal, but it is. Uh, it's pretty solid, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's got a, it's got a nice folky taste to it, you know. Yeah. Uh, okay, I got two more. I got two more chats, and then I want to get into. Um, I want to get into kind of like uh, what you want people to know. Like, I, I want you to like freestyle on what you want people to know about this whole thing in just a second. So Amateur Ann says, I remember Witless jailing a barber and telling businesses they couldn't sell seeds to people at Home Depot and Lowe's and the tyrant got reelected. Yeah, actually, how do you feel about that? How do you feel that Whitmer... And Walls, same thing. Newsom is still is still in. He didn't get recalled. What do you feel about that? Like, are are we too far fucking gone? Are we such pathetic little bitches as citizens that we will just let tyrants like not only walk over us, but we'll, we'll like, no, please do it again next time. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't think that we're too far gone. I'll never have that outlook on life. You know, I um, gladly I mean, appreciate that, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I and I can get real fucking pessimistic, dude. Like I can say some dark shit and I'm just like, ah, fuck it. You know, but ultimately I'll never have that outlook on life because I believe in truth, man. I believe in truth and I believe in freedom and we have to fight for that shit. And unfortunately, you know, to me. Certain things like that, all that does is just tell me that, hey, look, guys, this is, um, you know, a bunch of areas where your local government and state governments are totally fucked and corrupt. Yeah. And your whole election system that you think is fair and just isn't fair and just, you know, because you can put a straight up mentally retarded person up there who no one shows up to their shit. And then you have someone else who's like, I'm super intellectual, you know, intellectual and I can, you know, uh, combat every single point that I believe in and argue it. And millions of people show up to my shit and then I lose to some fucking retard. Come on, man. Like, that's not that's not real, bro. It's bullshit. It's a setup, dude. You know, what's really fucking irritating me right now. Like, I'm so ac what? I'm livid. I, I don't look it because I'm smiling. I'm furious and so angry. Your audio is now perfect. <laughs> Are you serious, dude? <laughs> yeah. Like you plugged in your phone and you threw in the headphones and it fucking just works. And now I'm just, I'm like, God fucking damn it. <laughs> I'm so mad about it. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, these these wireless Bluetooth headphones right here are the shit, bro. I got them off Amazon for 40 bucks. They work in every situation. They're waterproof, all that. <laughs> I only got one of them in, too. If I put if I put this other one in, I'll have four microphones around me. <laughs> it might, it might be the charging of the phone. It might be the headphone. I don't know what it was. Cause like it does, none of it made any fucking sense. Cause I thought, okay, well maybe it's the headphones, but when you unplugged them and you started talking into the phone, it got, we got the same exact glitching going on. So I think maybe it was just the, uh, like maybe it's the USB dongle to connect the headphones. Maybe it's just that the, the phone needed to be charged. I don't know what it is, but all I want to do right now is go, uh, kidnap a governor. That's all I want to do. Right now, just pick any governor. I'll probably <laughs> no, I'm gonna kidnap Greg Abbott because I don't think he can run away very fast. Like I think I could catch him <laughs> wheeling along. <laughs> but God, ah damn it. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Sorry, with, bro. We'll just no, have to do another one then. You know what I'm saying? With super crisp audio or something. Dude, I'm I'm down. I I love people who talk about freedom. I love people who uh, realize that the government is what it is. And most importantly, this is this is. I'm so refreshed to hear you say though that because uh, I talk to a bunch of people who are like the black pill, right? Like they're so fucking hopeless that well, nothing can fix anything. And and those are the guys who are literally like, I'm just waiting for the day when ch ch becomes reality. And it's like. I don't, I don't want that day. Like I do not want to have to fight 
for the basic the basic civilization that we have. Like, I think our civilization could be better. I think there are better systems. Um, for you, it's anarchy. For me, it's something close to anarchy. Whatever it is, like, I think that there's something better. But getting there can be really tough, and I'm willing to go the slow route of we have, like, a pretty fucking good gig going on so long as there's not a boot on my fucking neck. And... um or the boots, at least like a woman size shoe still. Like as long as that's happening and we can maybe reduce that and work towards it, I really don't want like the armed collapse. And I talked to so many people who are like, nope, it's just fucking over. And I'm like, I don't want it to be over though. Like I kind of, I kind of like having a house and a car and gas pumps at work. Like I, that I'm, right. I dig that. Right. So yeah, absolutely. Um, I love electricity. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's um, kind of nice, right? Yeah, the internet, pretty nice. The internet's cool. There's pretty ladies on it. <laughs> yeah, like the internet's great. We get to talk to people we would never talk to or ever see in our life. And and look, here's the deal. We're winning the internet battle, bro. We I know. Are absolutely dominating them in the realm of, of, of information. That's why they're struggling so hard to censor everyone. And they're running around like chickens with their heads cut off, dude, to try to fucking combat, you know, some, you know, two guys in, in a utility room and a guy in his bedroom, you know what I'm saying? In front of his computer, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And they're no, in some multi-million dollar studios. Dude, it's, it's crazy. Uh, so like I, I do, law stuff but i also talk like nerd culture shit because i'm a fucking idiot uh with some friends of mine and like they they like criticize uh hollywood they criticize marvel a whole lot and disney and like to find these people who command millions of dollars of production and who bring in you know a billion dollars in ticket sales or whatever and to see them pissed off and like tweet about some random YouTuber who's sitting in like a, a closet <laughs> just with a bunch of toys in the background. And they're like, well, this guy sucks. It's like, who, why do you even care? Like you, your budget is a hundred million dollars and you're fucking worried about a guy named Gary. Like what is wrong with you? But we, we do, right. we win the internet uh, information battle because it's just fucking true. Right. Like that's the weapon. Yes. And that's, that's the difference right there is because, you know, that person that is talking about that guy, Gary, in his, in his basement or whatever, yeah. that person probably most likely isn't actually believing what he's telling everyone at that time. Some other guy came up with a piece of paper and told him to fucking say it. And then now he's got to act like he cares about it and say it so he can get the paycheck. But when it's people like us, we are, believe what we say and we stand behind what we say and we're spitting facts, bro, straight up. And that shit resonates with people way more. You know, you can, sometimes you can just tell what the truth is. You know, you hear it and you're like, you know what? Actually, that's the truth right there. I know it, you know? Yeah, it's it's amazing. Our, our sense of intuition and justice is actually like a pretty good barometer um, for most people. And, and the things you have to do to get away from, but, and this is the entire basis. I, I correct me if I'm wrong on my lingo. Cause my, my anarchist is not great, but it's the idea of natural law, right? Like there's a natural set of consequences for actions. And um, when there's, when there's unnatural actions, the unnatural consequences come kind of from the community that is developed and, and a set of social mores are acceptable sort of behaviors that people are supposed to follow. So you've, you've got like, look, if you touch the electric fence, you're going to get shocked. If you jump over the electric fence and try and rape my cow, I'm going to have to do something bigger than shock you. Right. Like, is that, is that a kind of a basic idea? And, and yeah, so yeah, th this is the reason like anarchism, libertarianism, or, or the sort of the maximum freedom perspectives get to is like, there's a basic set of shit that we can all, understand because when someone took our toy when we were a kid we figured out that that didn't feel right like and it's not much more complicated than that like we we really don't need eight hundred thousand pages of law to say don't hit me don't take my shit don't interfere with my ability to make money or make things 
and also stay the fuck off my property. Like that's that's pretty basic. We we get those things. And so when we when we start going on the internet and just saying that, like, hey, you know what? It's really fucking weird that that like these uh, purple haired uh, idiots at Twitter just like decide to ban people because they don't like what they say. And like they'll find some excuse to ban people over speech. Like that seems weird because like when I, where I was raised, you could like talk. No one had to listen to you. They could all just go away. And on Twitter, there's this like mute button and I can just keep that idiot away from me if I want to. But anybody else can hear him because I don't want to mess with that. And it's, I, I think to me, that's why we're winning. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, that we are winning because we have truth on our side. I, I look at it through a more kind of a spiritual way. You know what I mean? And this is like, yeah, this is something about that. that, you know, someone can prove, right? Like, I can't sit here and tell you like, you know, I've seen this or whatever. I, it's kind of like, I, I look at it like riffing on a guitar, right? Like when you're writing songs, especially like metal, it can be like super technical and, and like complicated and fast. Right. But yeah. when you're freestyling and riffing like that, you just kind of naturally start coming up with some things. And then the drummer starts vibing with you. And then before you know it, like you guys are in this zone that, you never thought you were going to be in. And now you just wrote like the sweetest shit you've ever heard. And that's like a, a feeling that kind of comes naturally that I can't explain to you how it happens, you know, with like empirical data and evidence, you right. know, but I look at it, I look at it through kind of like a purpose and a, and a spirituality type of dynamic. So number one, truth is real. Okay, truth is objective. It's inherent to creation. It is or it was. Truth is not something that has not happened yet. That is not what truth is. Truth is something that has happened or that is happening right now. That is real data that we can, you know, um, observe and stuff like that. Um, you know, and then you have facts and certain things like that. But truth exists. So then I have to think like, okay, well, if truth exists, then some sort of morality has to exist, right? Like this condition of freedom, right, is morally legitimate. There's no violence involved. There's no coercion. There's no threats. There's no force. That's a legitimate condition. When you go into a grocery store, that's anarchism, bro. That's freedom because Yes, everyone needs food. You know what I mean? Everyone needs food. We'll die without it. But everyone there from the person stocking the shelves, from the person ringing you up, you know, the, the, the truck drivers delivering it, all of them are receiving a service by providing a service and, and making money. And nobody has to do it. Yes. No one has to do any of that, you know? Um, but if we don't, like, we'll starve, right? So... I think there's a lot of purpose to things and I try to keep it as simple as possible, but because I believe in truth and because I believe that I don't have the, the worldview that, you know, we all came out of the primordial ooze for no reason at all. And then we just like developed from, you know, like the kind of the evolution thing or whatever uh, and Darwinism. I don't subscribe to that. Like if other people believe in that, whatever, I think evolution yeah, yeah. is like certain types of evolution is real. Like you can elevate your consciousness, you know, you can evolve as a person, right. And become a better person. But, uh, you know, so I don't you, uh, subscribe to. Are, are you like, are you Christian or can I like, I, I'm no, no, um, okay. Something else. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a Christian. I have, you know, I do have some Christian friends and, and Christian family members. You know, when I look at the story of the Bible and I and I and I read the story of Jesus and stuff like that, um, I see almost like kind of a perfect representation of how human beings should act. Like, you know, don't use violence against people, don't threaten people, don't worship man, right? Like, don't worship authority invested in man. Um, but should you worship a higher? Should you worship ass though? ass like big booties yeah like booty should you worship booty 
<laughs> like at least a little I mean, bit. I do, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah. I can't help it, bro. I got this inclination where I see that shit and I'm just like, oh, you know, I just want to slap. <laughs> it deserves a slap. <laughs> it deserves it. Or, or at the very least, just go up to it and just look at it and its magnificence and then just set a little knickknack on it. You know, just, it just, just a little knickknack. It deserves it. You know? <laughs> It's beautiful. <laughs> I fucking love it. Here, let me hit these. Uh, let me hit. I got three chats to read. And then I want you to tell me, like, I want you to give me, now that we have perfect audio. I was joking to myself in my head. I'm like, I want this guy to give, like, the 60-second elevator pitch of everything he wants people to know about this thing. But I know the audio is going to go... <laughs> So I'm going to give him I'm going to give him 120 seconds. But no, I like, now that we have perfect audio... Um, let me read these things. And then I want you to tell me like what the biggest takeaways for you are over what has fucking happened to you. Cause what happens to you, this is the thing that people don't might not realize what happens to you is what happens to people all the time. Yours just had a shitload of press and you happen to win. Like that's the difference between you and a bunch of guys in federal prison right now. And so I like, that's, uh, I want to, uh, if you agree with that or whatever, but I want to get your perspective on that, but let me read these three real quick. Uh, or these two, sorry. The squid says, so she's got them summer teeth. That's Jenny plunk. Some are here. Some are missing snackle tooth. Oh no. Uh, and Darius Harvey says L M F A O. Thank you. Uh, thank you to everybody who's done that. All right, Brandon, give me the 60 second pitch. What happened to you and why it fucking matters to everybody, everybody out there. Okay. So why this matters to everyone out there. Listen, what you need to understand is that there is a conspiracy against people who care about freedom and love freedom and are willing and have the courage to speak, to stand up in the crowd of everyone that disagrees with them and stand up and say, you know what? I think that's wrong. And I don't agree with that. And they're willing to expose it for what it is, right? There is a active ongoing conspiracy of federal agents monitoring people and fabricating and creating fake conspiracies around American citizens who are not, who feel like they are not subject to the authority of the state. Okay. And even when you word something like that, it makes them angry. They hate it because they're the, in the authoritarian mindset of you should respect my commands, you know, yeah. comply with my commands and my edicts peasant. You know, oh, they don't. You know what? Let's punish them and show them who's really in control. This is the type of ideology and mentality that these authoritarians in the government have. And the thing you were saying before about like some of the blue haired people and stuff. That's why I think a lot of times the state can be super dangerous is because like, look, I'm not worried about the blue haired girls. Right. I'm not worried about the, the guys with the mustaches that are short and whatever back in the 1940s. I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about all the people that follow their orders. And the problem is, is there's this entire apparatus in the structure that has a monopoly on force that those people can get into to where they can legitimize their ideology and enforce it against other people. And I really want people to understand that because that's what we need to be focusing on is, you know, at least decentralizing it or, or, or something or speaking out against it. Don't say remain silent against it. But if you're, if you're, if you're not going to remain silent and you're going to speak out against it, try to always clarify that what you're talking about is defensive. You are always talking about a moral position of defense. Okay. From aggression because that's ultimately what it is. Um, going out and using violence, mass violence, that's not really gonna change 
um, anything. It's probably, you know, it's going to cause some chaos and they're just going to put a new cage around, right? You want to try to free as many minds as you can. Get that person to at least walk up to the door and jiggle the handle a little bit and maybe crack it open and say, you know what, I might be willing to walk through that. And maybe if they don't walk through it right then, you know, give them the information to where they can do it on their own, you know, because at some point in time, just like me on my journey of waking up, you know, I never thought the door was there. I never thought, it, I, you know, I could see it, but it didn't exist. You know what I'm saying? Like, I never thought that it was possible that I could learn the things that I have and, and live the life that I could have and, and live under these principles. That's why I'm here right now, because I believe in principles and I'm willing to stand up for them and I'm willing to fight them. I beat a life sentence in the federal government, bro, in the federal courts. That's absolutely <laughs> unheard of. <laughs> yeah, it's fed, fed court. Fed court conviction rates are higher than state courts and state courts are like 98 percent. It's crazy. It's crazy. But you had, like you said, you had the fucking truth on your side. And the truth yeah. was the feds had no case. There was never a conspiracy to kidnap Governor Whitmer. The The only thing that got the other guy, the other two guys convicted is their own stupid fucking bullshit, um, which manifested what my guess is enough of a quote unquote overt act to uh, to move a jury to to make it wiggle for the jury. Right. Like that's what they needed. They needed to go. Yeah. These guys, if they had Whitmer's address, they definitely would have kidnapped her which I think is yeah, ludicrous. Yeah, it, it is ludicrous, you know, and even though, you know, you know they didn't want to do it, you know what I mean? And, and stuff like that. It's that uh, in a lot of people's minds, it's like a just in case thing, right? They're like, well, even if they didn't have the capability or they really wanted to, you know, maybe they could have. So I'm okay with what the federal agents did. Like you can point out all this super horrible stuff, right? But the state is going to say, well, we had to do that thing because these guys are so dangerous and violent. Look what they said. You know, mm -hmm. people who yeah. are normal don't say things like this, right? So we right. had to do Good, it. Good, decent and company would go, never do that. Mm-hmm. So the people go, well, you know, what, what everyone did here was kind of wrong, but, you know, maybe, maybe the authority did have to do, you know, what they did. Right. And they just kind of side on the authority. And, and I want to point back to the Milgram experiments. I don't know if anyone has heard of the Milgram experiments. Have These you are the ones with the, uh, the electroshock, right? That's yep, where they, uh, yep. so they, I the milligram experiments are where they, they took a, a student of some sort and they put first, they shock them with like an electric sensor at the lowest level shock that they'll administer. So they make them feel the shock. And then they have a blind test where the person is to ask the other person questions. And if the person answers the question wrong, they're supposed to administer a progressively higher shock. Turns out, though, there wasn't actually any shock. There wasn't even actually another person. There was just a recorded guy with some responses going from like, ow, hey, what are you doing? To all the way to like, I have a pacemaker. You need to stop. And then just no response at all. And what they found was that the overwhelming majority of people, when given instructions to continuing to administer this shock that they heard was totally safe for people, despite the evidence from the, the recordings, they would continue to administer a shock even to a person they thought was literally dead on the other end because authority guided their actions more than their own personal morality. Exactly, exactly. And that experiment is scary, but you know it's, it's also true to a large extent to where you can take otherwise good people, right? Otherwise good people that have no malicious intent. They, you know, they're kind of your average person, but when a perceived authority directs them or commands them to do certain things, 
they're willing to do something that they otherwise would never ever do. Right. You know, and that's scary. And that's kind of the dynamic that we're dealing with now. Right. And it's, uh, it's uh, the same thing as the Nuremberg defense, right? Like it, it's, it's all based on this idea that uh, authority will drive people to atrocity um, because when they get to divorce their personal morality from the question, they're willing to do things that is given to them by someone who knows, who knows the answer. They'll, they'll just, they'll, they'll defer their morality to someone who has the right, the right information. And the right information, as it turns out, like the standard for that is really fucking low. And the reason we know that is because Hank Johnson is still a senator, despite thinking that if we landed Marines on Guam, it would literally, the island would flip over and turn upside down in the fucking ocean. Like the dumbest right. man you've ever fucking seen is, is in the Senate of the United States. So that's, that's the scary part. The scary part of the milligram experiment is not that people will concede to authority because actual authority, you go, okay, well, like if God showed up and told you what to do, you'd be like, well, yeah, man, maybe I'll do what the creator of the universe says. I don't know. Or like Baphomet or whatever, like whoever is in control, you're like, yeah, I'll do whatever they say because they have a lot of power, but no, it turns out that literally you're just your boss at quick trip can, 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 get you to kill someone if it's in your job description. And that's fucking insane, but it's real. <laughs> that's maybe worse. All right. Uh, yeah. Brandon, here's, here's what I have to do at this point in the show. I have a very special thing that I do called the daily unbreaded. And um, okay. I'll explain it to you very quickly. It is, uh, there's a guy named Matthew Harris. He was a professor of philosophy at UCLA. And um, he's a black man, half black, I think. He's a half black man who decided uh, after getting his PhD from Duke and being hired by UCLA that he would write an 800 page manifesto about why black people are better than everybody and shouldn't associate with anyone. And um, so what I do is every day on my show, I use a random number generator and I read a page of this, of this thing, which is one of the most offensive texts that exists. And so I'm going to, I have to read a page of it, but I always want to give my guests the opportunity to not read it because I'll tell you the language and it is something. <laughs> it's something. So um, if you care about your personal and professional reputation, I'd recommend leaving the stream right now. If you're cool with it, we'll go ahead and read it. But it's up to you. I want to give you that option. I'll tell you what, man. I, I don't think I've heard of that. And if, if there's some pretty offensive shit, dude, I want to hear what, what that has to say. So let's dive into it, bro. I knew I fucking loved you so much. <laughs> what I have to... I do have to do one thing first, and this is a hoodwink for you. Um, I do have a paid ad read that I have to read for the show uh, because they've sponsored every single stream in November, and it's the last day of November. So let me present to the chat Birch Gold Group, birchgold.com forward slash knows the only non-Jewish cold company in the entire world, as far as I can tell. <laughs> Birch Gold is here to help you protect your IRA or 401k. And how they do it is by uh, letting you know about a quote-unquote loophole. It's not, it's not really a loophole. That's the wrong word. But a facet of IRS code, which allows you to own physical gold or physical silver in your IRA or 401k. It's a hedge against inflation. It's a hedge against market volatility. It's a hedge against weirdos like uh, the guy who ran FTX, weirdo frizzy haired guys who fuck literal goblins, as we have found out uh, who run FTX. It's a hedge against that bullshit. Um, gold and silver have been resistant to volatility and inflation. They tend to steadily increase in value uh, on a way that tracks with 
that tracks with a standard rate of inflation, but recognizes the inherent value of these materials. Birch Gold Group, they don't want you to buy gold. They don't want you to buy silver. They don't want you to invest. They don't want you to think like, oh, if I invest in gold, I'll make a million dollars. No, they want you to get information about how this might, might be an appropriate way to hedge against some of the volatility that we see. Hedging is not an investment strategy. Hedging is a risk reduction strategy. And that's what they're saying. But all you have to do, birchgold.com forward slash knows, click on this green button and they'll contact you and they'll tell you everything you need to know. Because I'm just a humble click merchant while they are the actual gold merchants, but not the kind that you think. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're just out here trying to put some metal in your fucking pocket. And, uh, and if, oh, they have a new promotion that I'm going to tell you guys more about, uh, tomorrow on the next show when I've had time to prep for it, they have a new promotion. If you, if you use more than $5,000 to buy gold and silver, they will send you some gold backs of your choice. Uh, I'm going to hopefully have a sample of those gold backs in my hand very soon. But if you spend more than 5,000, they'll say gold backs are like, paper currency that's printed with gold. I don't know. It's a weird thing and they have a bunch of different options, but you can check that out on your own if you decide that it's the right move for you. If you decide it's the wrong move, tell them to fuck off. They love that. They love that. And also when you tell them to fuck off, say, Nick Ricada told me if this wasn't the right move for me, say, fuck off. Don't worry. I'm okay with it. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon, for uh, indulging me in that. And now you're about to indulge me in probably the weirdest thing you've experienced this week. And You've been <laughs> felt up by a Fed. So who knows <laughs> what this is? Right. Here we go. Here we go. I'm bread. Look, your job is not to ask questions. Your job is to go with what's go what's happening on screen right now. Uh, let me get my random number generator up and we're gonna pick a page. This this dude wrote an 803 page book. It's eight hundred pages and it's all fucking wild that's crazy how many that's n-words so do you think you could cram into 1800 or into 800 pages oh dude like so many <laughs> like more than five thousand. yeah definitely more than ten thousand, though Ooh, i don't know about that I don't know about that. You'd have to make like every word that word. <laughs> this guy has well over 10,000 N words in this. Um, okay. I'm, oh, I'm, sure. I'm trying to find a page that isn't just a repeat of kill all the Asians. <laughs> 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 nope. That's a repeat too. Hold on. I'm trying. I'm trying chat. Just a second. Oh, 358. This will be a good page. Here we go. Um. <laughs> All right. Uh, so here's what I do. I read a page completely out of context. There is no, like, we don't go to the previous page to figure out what he was talking about. We don't go to the next page to figure out what's going on. Um, uh, do you want to read any of this? Like you, you can. Yeah, like, what can, can you can you pull it up on the screen? Yeah, yeah. And I just see it, or okay. okay. If if you can see it, so there are. Th this is a good page because there's fucking bullet points, so we could just alternate bullet points if you want. Okay, cool. Yeah, can you pull it to the left a little bit so I can see the rest of the sentence? Uh let me see. I'm seeing the numbers, but like that number three. It says, I enjoy, and then it's okay. Hold on just a second. Is this, is this good? Can you see all of that? Yep, I can make it bigger, bit, too. Yeah, try to make it bigger. Uh, hold on. That, that made it cut off a little bit. Oh, there you go. Yep, there, there we go. go. So this is good for you right here? If you can make it a little bit bigger and then do that exact same thing that you just did, that will work. Mm, it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be too much okay yeah i could i could probably you know i can work with that because i can i can zoom in actually a little bit right here okay Good. because we're on youtube when he gets to the inward 
I'm gonna need you to say binger <laughs> instead of the actual okay. N word, <laughs> just because. Okay. But uh, but everything else, <laughs> you just go for it. So here's what I'll do. I'll read the I'll read the evens, which will start with this second half of number two here, and you read the odds. Okay. So three, five, seven, whatever. Sound good? Yep, got it. Okay, and if however you want to do this, you can follow my lead. I read it kind of dramatically. You read it however you want. And I'm very, very happy about this. Okay. Woman thinks she wants to be like a man. Only the brainwashed woman tortures herself by trying to be something more than a bitch. Only the brainwashed woman wants to be more than she is. The virgin wives are ranked higher because their spirits are cleaner. I enjoy fucking my widow where they are ranked. It helps their spirits and it just works for us. When I was in the first grade, they put me in the two group. They pulled me aside and these old white women said, Matt, you aren't finishing your weekly readers as quickly as you used to. You aren't finishing your dittos as fast as you did before. And we are going to take you out of the one group and put you into the two group with the slower kids. I never forgave white people. And to this day, I know that was the first time I encountered discrimination. I don't need to talk about my intelligence that never helps unless you're talking to yourself it was synesthetic maybe you still are profound to the point that i don't feel like i came from the same anything as you i don't know what is sexy but i know that i am it that word works sometimes, but most of the time it is just crackers and bikes making shit up. Trust nothing in the DSM because it wasn't made for bingers. Okay, so when the crackers sings about shackles and whips, don't accept it as if just a song about BDSM. Bingers, stop being stupid. They only have anything because of slavery. You think it's acceptable for a cracker pop singer to sing about shackles and whips and you just nod your head and don't murder him for mocking you about descending from slaves? An apology ain't shit, bingers. Who want their lives to matter must soak their hands in blood. We call that mind counts. <laughs> I said that for myself, so fuck you. It's beyond fucked up to put children who are still learning into groups based on learning that ranks them as if someone learning is better than other learning. Fuck you. Sister Sheila, I hope that you are tortured and I hope that someone strangles you in a nursing home. Fuck you, Miss Gracia. Either we both came from monkeys or neither of us did. You fucking, well, actually, maybe polygamism is true. I don't give a shit. But you are still a racist bitch for the way you handled conversations with a fifth grader. I hope you suffer a painful menopause and die lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Abilene, bitch, I hope you fall down all the stairs you ever walk on, you bitch. Should have never raised your voice or been such a cunt. You weren't qualified to teach children. Your energy was fucking horrible for a nun. You had no warmth. You were such a callous fucking human like a boiling teapot. I hope you rot while still alive. Sister Clarita, fuck you. Sister Clarita, I hope someone spanks you with a brick. <laughs> well, where are we at? Where are we at? Miss uh, Leonard. Miss Leonard. Leonard. Miss Leonard, fuck you for being mediocre and not intervening on the oppression of a small child. You're a piece of shit, and I hope your family suffers more agony than I'm capable of describing or even imagining. 
I never liked my kindergarten teacher, but in retrospect, I wonder if her blonde daughter, Megan, grew up to be a cutie or not. In retrospect, her name sounded kind of Polish, and the closer you get to Russia, the higher the chances are that the women look fish-faced like Vladimir the Imp Putin. Sometimes you can't tell if a bitch is from Poland or one of those countries. I don't know if it's the... I'm bread. <laughs> wow, bro. Wow. I gotta get that book, dude. I gotta get that book. I'll send it to you. This that guy shit is, is funny, fucking hilarious. He's uh he's currently he is also arrested for threats of violence, except the difference between you and him is he actually told people he was going to come murder them with bullets, and then he tried to buy a gun. So, <laughs> he has some issues. <laughs> Dude, oh, my God. Hilarious. That's crazy. <laughs> and you know he's so dead serious about all that shit. He's like, he's sitting there writing that shit. He's like, hell yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> he's 100% serious dude he so the day I, it was like the day before he was arrested he uploaded 200 videos to YouTube in one day my man had a mission <laughs> right he paid for that extra bandwidth bro on that month's subscription dude that shit's crazy he's sitting there, it's like select all upload motherfucker and he hit it they were insane videos i it's uh it's one of my favorite things i've found on the internet is that guy um okay here's what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna read the rest of the chats that have come through i've only been reading the the 20 dollars and plus ones for now because that's kind of how i keep the flow of the show going as best i can but i'm gonna read the rest of them and then i'm gonna wrap up the show if you uh you want to stay you're welcome to i'm happy to have you here um if you need to go at any point uh because i i think you're like an hour ahead of me um you're welcome to leave as well it's it's up to you you would be uh you'd be welcome back to talk more about freedom and liberty at any time bro yeah yeah it's about three it's almost three here so i gotta start hitting the sack because i gotta i gotta be up in the morning to pick my car from the shop and uh, hopefully they fix that shit so i can go to work tomorrow yeah man well dude it's been uh a huge pleasure having you on um i love i love the whole uh, like uh, seriously we need more people talking about freedom i love the fact that you have hope uh it, despite dude you got fucked by the government and you're still out here preaching hope and i've seen dudes who've never seen a negative day in their entire fucking life being like oh, we're never coming back from this it's like if you can have hope i can have hope other people can have hope but we can also advocate for a better society, a better government, and hopefully one that's much fucking smaller than it is now. Uh, anything you want to say before you go, buddy, uh, the floor is yours and uh, my hat's off to you. You got me on Telegram. You got me on Twitter. So hit me uh, hit me up anytime. And uh, I, I think you're just an absolute fucking gem. Awesome, man. Thanks. Yeah, I really appreciate, uh, appreciate you having me on. Uh you know, and, and plus, if you guys want to add me on Twitter, um, my Twitter is uh, at Brandon underscore Caserta. Um, I'm on TikTok as well, although I haven't made a whole lot of videos lately, but I got quite a few there that I've been making. Uh, and that's uh, Kinet at Kinetic Truth. Um, and uh, I'm on Facebook, too, man. I don't, I, that's how much I don't even care, bro. Like, I'm on everything. Like, I'm spitting truth on Facebook, too. So you can add me on there if you want as well. Um, just search my name, Brandon Caserta. You'll see my picture. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for talking about what fucking happened to you. It's an absolute travesty. I love, though, that you're not defeated. Uh, most people who lose a year and a half of their life, uh, they don't they don't really recover from it. Those scars last forever. It sounds like you're like, yeah, bring on the fucking scars. I'll tattoo over them and fuck you. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live life. I'm going to live free. And uh, you can't censor my voice. So I respect the hell out of that dude. And uh, we, sh we should talk again soon, man. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm totally down, bro. All right. Peace, brother. Have a good night. Thanks again. All right, man. Stay armed. Stay free. boy. <laughs> oh, guys. 
I love this guy. I think he's fucking fantastic. Uh, I think he's awesome. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know the audio was was messy. I'm glad we found out the fucking solution uh, to the to the, the final solution to the audio. Um, but but that's this is what this is what America is full of is people like obviously they're not like Brandon. That guy. That guy's something else. He's something else. He's something unique. He's been through fucking hell, uh, and he came out uh, shinier for it. Um, but that said, that said, uh, America is full of normal fucking people. And Brandon, he said something that kind of, it stung a little bit. It stung a little bit. He's like, I don't have mainstream opinions. His opinions should be mainstream. I know anarchy is like not something that a lot of people are with or whatever. I'm not an anarchist, but the fact that anarchy as an idea isn't mainstream is actually more terrifying than anarchy as an idea being mainstream. That's what we need to be concerned about. We're, con we're, we're seriously saying the idea that no government like that there's a society that can exist outside of government at some level. We're like, that's not mainstream. That, that idea is dangerous. That's where we are. That's how bad the conditioning is right now. That the idea of not having a government registers as danger to the average American is a travesty because many of our founders, many of the people involved, I, sh I shouldn't say the founders who signed the documents, but many of the people involved in the founding of this country, when the country was formed, they fled the country to where there wasn't one. They fled to Texas. They fled to Oklahoma areas. They fled to Nebraska areas. They moved to California. They moved to places where there wasn't a government. The people who built our nation did not build a nation that we know now. They built a nation of freedom. That should be the mainstream. Even if it's not the prevailing idea, the idea that we go, we could shed these fucking losers who leech our money and who steal our freedom at any time. We could shed them and still go on. There might be an adjustment, but we'd still go on. That shouldn't be rare. That should be common. And with that, guys, I was in a car all day drinking a ton of liquid. I'll be right back. He drank a fair bit and then realized that his bladder can't handle the liquor inside Leaving us with his chair while he runs up the stairs Hoping the stream doesn't suddenly die While we are waiting, we'll be laughing at you The drinking along is what most of us do
Oh my gosh. I've I don't know if I've ever had to do a double P song. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Let's wrap this thing up. Let's uh, let's read the chats, and we'll finish up, and uh, and that'll be great. Darius Harvey says, "All because he got rejected." SMH lol. <laughs> oh, oh my. Um, by the way, thank you guys for uh, watching on YouTube. Thank you for watching on. Oh, was it Friday? I did triple shit. Well, okay. Thank you for watching on YouTube. Thank you for watching on Odyssey. Thank you for watching on Rumble. All of you are fantastic. Wherever you are, please hit that fucking like button. Please do that. It uh, it really does help the show. Um, it's uh, it it pushes us up the leaderboard, and it is um, on on Rumble specifically. It pushes us up the leaderboard, gets more people to realize that the show is here or here. And, uh, and that's, that's a good thing. Um, as far as streaming on rumble versus YouTube, I, I wanted to do this interview on, uh, YouTube for the main reason that he announced it on YouTube beforehand. He said, uh, he, he posted before I had posted. He said, we're going to be live on YouTube, rumble and odyssey. And I'm like, okay, well, it sounds good. We'll be on YouTube rumble and odyssey. Then um tomorrow tomorrow i have adam krigler on we will spend a little bit of time talking about the tim pool drama fallout what has happened since adam's stream uh that he did tim pool's response we'll be talking about that and then we'll also just be talking about good stuff because adam's a friend of mine and i want to just i just like talking to him and it's been a little bit We'll probably talk about whatever's going on in the world, whatever he wants to talk about. It'll be great. But that's tomorrow night, 11 p.m. Central Time. Adam the Krigler, Krigler will be on. And uh, the, the Tim Pool stuff is fresh. It's weird. It's a little bit sexy. But when you consider that Tim was involved, it's decidedly less sexy at that point. Um but yeah, Krigler will be on uh, tomorrow. Um, as far as Thursday, I will probably do a solo stream. Friday, I will not be live streaming Friday. Uh, I will not have that. I'm taking Lady Rackets. We are going away for a charity dinner on Saturday, but we're going to take the day early and go uh, have some fun with 100% um, with less children. Uh, and 100% more free time. So we're going to do that on Friday night. There will not be a stream, okay? If you're not in my locals, ricadalaw.locals.com, something is broken inside of you. Look, joining locals is free, and it will give you all of the updates, all of the notifications, email notifications when I go live, whether it's on Locals, whether it's on YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey, Twitch, whether I'm going on someone else's show, I post a link on Rumble so you can, or on Locals so you can find it. That's free. That's a free thing. If you join the Locals, five bucks a month, $50 for the year so you get two months free if you want to do that. If you do that, you get access to a 24 7 live chat full of degeneracy nonsense and cock slappery that does not exist anywhere else on the internet. This is, this is the internet of yesteryear. This is the internet I grew up with. There's one moderator, ladies and gentlemen, and it's me. And guess who doesn't moderate shit? It's me. If you want to join in that, it's seriously, ricadalaw.locals.com, five bucks a month or 50 bucks per year to get yourself two months free. Come in here, hear all about Baldo reviews. Today we were discuss. there was a debate on whether female squirting is pee or if it's not pee. Um, we also have severe, like serious debates about religion, uh, the extent of morality. We have debates over whether or not Keffels is a man. 
Obviously, the answer is yes. The debate wasn't really, it was how much of a man. Um, we have discussions and debates going 24-7. You can have an exclusive chat for every stream and every appearance that I do. You also just have a 24-7 chat when I'm not there. And when I'm not streaming, a lot of times I'm in the chat. Hanging out, shooting the shit with everybody. Because I stopped watching TV. I stopped playing video games. And what I do is I go in my, like if I have free time, I'm in my locals live chat shit posting. So is Lady Rackets. We're having a good time. Ton of fun. If you guys want to join us, RicadaLaw.locals.com. Big shout out to the locals community. Best chat on the internet. They make every show possible. Every single show is possible because the locals community exists. So there's also some exclusive locals live streams and stuff, but I mean, who cares about uh, accidentally seeing me naked in a hot tub? That was, that, de that didn't happen. If you hear that happened, that was a fucking false rumor. And whoever said it is a bigot. Nick Starling. Okay, back to the uh, chats here. Nick Starling says, I have a business proposition. I give you $20. You give me one channel shout out. Names, Nick Starling, anti-woke VTuber, adding Rumble to my list of streaming sites on Thursday. Hype! Okay, guys, Nick Starling. You could, I, assuming they're adding Rumble because they're already on YouTube and other stuff, make sure to check them out. Nick Starling, an anti-woke VTuber. So if you like VTubing, degenerate, uh, and you like anti-wokeness, very generate. Uh, check out Nick Starling, and um, and I hope that's a good good fit for you. Uh, with that, I'm going to go to the locals chats next. Diz guy says, "You see that dock out there? Built it myself, handcrafted each piece, and it's the best dock in town. But do they call me McGregor the dock builder? No, you kidnap one governor and very good, Diz guy. Thank you." Classic joke. Kar Karamachet. Ricada Law, we need a meme server archive. I agree with that. Karamachet also says, but Nick, we have all those laws and they still hit us and take our shit. That's the issue. The legal structures are warped. No, I agree with you. I agree. 100%. Uh, Mesopotamian Anon says, Nick, I am taking the Swiss bar exam today. Please wish me luck. Oh, shit. Good luck. I don't know what the Swiss bar exam looks like. It sounds like I'd be drunk after. Corny Buttknuckle says, are the goldbacks wet? No, they're not. What do you think this is? El Paso? Not the Fed says, do you reckon the Congress was so afraid of January 6th because they were projecting what the lawmaker inside them knew they deserved? Yes, literally yes. They said, oh, fuck. They found out and they may have actually reached our ivory tower. Could you imagine if you constructed an ivory tower with no doors that you could live in and lord over the people and someone threw up a fucking grappling hook? What would you do? Shit. Um, Fire PA 498. Here's your only fed money, Nick. Oh, thank you. Only feds. I love it. Only feds is the best. This guy says his favorite metal band, Nickelback. Oh, come on. Do the man some credit. He looked like a real one on metal to me. Uh, this guy says, I sent a bunch of chats tonight, but remember this guy got fucked by our government. That's never funny. And that's true. It's never funny to get fucked by your government, uh, but they do it all the time to a bunch of people. Oh, one more thing. I am in touch with Kyle Rittenhouse. He has agreed to do an interview. We're working on the date. We're working on the date, but I think we will soon have a Kyle Rittenhouse full interview on the only place he ever should have interviewed. So I'm looking forward to that, and I hope you guys will join me on that adventure. But that's, that's in the works. That's in the works. He did not get his rifle back. He specifically disclaimed it. Everybody disclaimed the rifle. I think it was destroyed. 
Jordan Bedker says, I grew up 15 miles from Cambria, Wisconsin. When all this happened, I was looking at houses in Cambria. There you go. Over to Rumble Wrestler Town says, why is the lawyer always peeing, mommy? Because his bladder is a fucking pregnant bitch. Nike 7, glowy dollars for you. Tell me about your childhood. My childhood was uh, pretty good. Two loving parents, both worked, went to school, did basically shitty in school because who fucking cares about the government? I learned that at an early age. Uh, and then, uh, and then I grew up and then probably got worse. Good job, mom and dad. Snuggle struggle says sticks. Hexentammer talked about the Dutch government wanting to buy up 3000 farms, supposedly to lower their carbon footprint, but mainly to make bank off selling that land to corpos later on. It's all a lie. Of course it's a lie. They won't. There's one thing wrong with that. They won't sell the land to corpos. They'll lease it. They'll lease it. The government will confiscate your land and lease it. They do this in the United States already. They confiscate the land through eminent domain. They give you a low compensation, a low ball number, and then they lease it at a fair market rate for the next 20, 30, 40 years while the property values skyrocket. So does the leasing rate. But look, you got your fair market value when it was down here don't fucking at me about the value being up here <clears throat> jane a leblanc says oh he's so hot look jane a, speak for yourself she's a she's a cutie from what i can see of her profile picture anyway she seems like a cutie but it seemed like uh brandon knew her good job dude wes wylevin says the wizard sends his regards cabal prevails Amateur Anth, Nick, can you somehow teach Pim Tool how to do interviews, debates, and how to treat people that work around him? Somehow, I don't think so. Look, I don't know how anybody else does anything. I just know how I do things, and uh, I like the way I do interviews. I like the way I do debates, and I like the way I treat people, generally speaking. So, uh, Kanye. So. That's all I'm saying. Two words. I got two words for you. Hey, Kanye. What's up? Uh, the other thing, people are telling me I should publicly like state that I would like to go on Joe Rogan, which feels weird. I don't like chasing down appearances. But uh, if anybody out there knows Joe Rogan, um, I'd happily go on his show. I don't, I don't know. People seem to think like I wouldn't or something. Um, I think, uh, I think Joe's one of the best interviewers that exists. And I try to emulate some of his style a little bit. I had my own spice to it, but um, he's a, he's a canvas and he lets his guests talk, which is something I've actually kind of learned from him is to let people speak. And uh, so Joe, you ever want to have on some fucking weirdo lawyer who talks about baldos all the time? Hit me up, brother. Factual. Politicians haven't been tarred and feathered in a while, and it shows. Here's my 10 for the lost bet on you being nine minutes late. I was trying not to be late. I had, dude, I had such a fucking shitty, uh, like, day, like, driving around. Like, I just driving in the Twin Cities during a fucking blizzard waiting for the airport to reopen so my friend could get picked up from the airport was a fucking disaster. Flash with no dash says, tell the kidnapper to use laptop mic. It was on a phone. And once he put in those Bluetooth, Bluetooth didn't work on StreamYard not long ago on Android. It just didn't. It, did, it would never detect your microphone or your headphones at all. Who knew? He figured it out. It's all good. Um, Fabi Fabrizio Ruffo. Imagine being paid Fed salary with benefits to lurk on 4chan. I got a BS in criminology. You think I can get that job? Do you speak a second language? Is it Somali, Hamoub, or Russian? If the answer is yes to those three things, like any one of those, you yes, you'll definitely get a job. 
If you speak a second language, it's like Spanish or something. You might, you might. Speaking a second language, huge benefit to the FBI. Uh, Alex Ayeo, hello from Warren. Hey, what's up, Alex? Nazir, you won, but what do you feel the feds took from you and how much does it pay to be an informant now? Oh, shit. I missed that one. Um, Ginger Finger, his aux cord is borked. He needs new in and out. Uh, Walter, while well, he's on, it was probably a, US, a USB-C dongle, frankly. Ginger Finger says, or wait, no, uh, Walter Deadman, just go with the standard black suit and sunglasses for your Fed outfit. Can't beat the classics. Gone fall, message retracted. Also says, did he at least get paid damages? No. No, if you get charged by the federal government and you go into to jail for like a year, year and a half awaiting trial, and then you come out and you win and the charges were completely frivolous, you still lose everything you lost. Your job, your house, often, uh, your cars get repoed. Um, any Anything you were paying stops getting paid, right? Because you stop earning money. Unless you have a shit ton of money sitting around, all that stuff stops. And when you get out, you're fucked. Even if you're completely innocent. All right, here we go. Uh, Darius says, does he still have his job? Nope. Me, mine says, here's some money since the feds won't send any. Darius Harvey says, are you suing? Best part, he could sue. He would lose. He would lose badly. Darius Harvey says, lot lizard, Lamal. That was good. ID crisis. Brandon needs to make bank off this story. Hashtag movie deal. Yeah, he should write a book. Absolutely. Crusader Saracen. Thank you for the donation. Unix EDU. Ginger guy has a Wolf of Wall Street level movie deal to sell with a Viking slash Last Kingdom hook. Money, money, money. Cheryl Meme. I worked with Jason Chambers in 14 and 15 to help take down ISIS accounts. We used Telegram and heard some sick poop about him. I'm 55 minutes behind you. Damn. Cheryl, that sounds amazing. Let me know if you want to ever tell me anything about Jason Chambers. Unix EDU, lol, Birch Gold be lit. Vanessa V. Oh, Darius says all because he got rejected. That's the, the manifesto, the death sentences by, by Matt Harris. Vanessa V. Muffin Rando, here, fishy, fishy. Am Jennifer, miss our favorite gremlin. Read your DM heart from V and tug simp. Wait, Vanessa V, read my DM. Which DM? Uh, which DM am I supposed to read? I'll find it. I'll read all of them. Every DM ever sent. Uh, corny butt knuckle. Kanye, I got, I got two words for you. Fish sticks. I don't get it. Rumble usernames says, uh, can you get Richards or Sharafsi for interviews as well? They both seem quite interesting and I'd pay quite a bit to see Richards reaction to your impression of him and the clip of him saying, Binger, please law daddy. I can ask. I don't know. I'll ask uh, Miss Wisco if, uh, if, if she thinks that either of them would be open to it. Deviation. I wasn't being rude, bro. I think letting Ye talk is the best plan because none of us has any idea what he has seen and done. I didn't think you were being rude. Uh, who else has fucked a Kardashian and been fucked by a Kardashian? Here's my thing. If I had Kanye on the show, I would be interested in creativity, in vision, in focus, in uh, the pulse of culture. Like Kanye... Dude, I, I don't ever underestimate that dude. Ever. When everybody else did, he said, I'll be a billionaire in five years. They all thought he'd be broke. And he fucking was a billionaire. Now, now, I don't know if he's as much of a billionaire. Because, holy shit, what they did to him. And why did they do it to him? Because he, he called out a conspiracy and then the conspiracy kind of reared its ugly head. It's kind of weird. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to talk to a guy like Kanye. Uh, Icky Fu sent a Give, Send, Go link to Kinetic Truth. Oh, does he have a Give, Send, Go? Why didn't he mention that? He does. He does. So if you go to Give, Send, Go, Kinetic Truth, 
you'll actually see the Brandon Caserta give send go. Here it exists. FBI framed me as a domestic terrorist and a fake conspiracy to arrest the governor of Michigan. I was eventually acquitted and sent free, but my life has been ruined. Government took everything from me and I need help getting back on my feet so I can help continue to spread the message of truth and wake up as many people as possible. So there you go. If anybody is curious about that, give, send, go forward slash kinetic truth. Uh, this just in case says Ricardo law. Don't forget that toast for eternal hexes. Mom. Thank you. Holy shit. I did. I did. Let me, uh, let me do that. So a member of my locals, eternal hex said, Hey, uh, due to circumstances right now, I don't, I can't afford a super chat, which of course no one should ever have to afford a super chat. And I don't want anybody to ever think about affording a super chat. Grab it. Send a super chat or a rumble rant if it's a luxury for your pleasure. But um, he said he can't afford one. He asked if I would do a toast. His mother has just been diagnosed today with cancer. So to Eternal Hex's mother, to the fight that they face together, blessings to them that she has a companion, that she has support, and that she hopefully has laughter, all of those things being critical in fighting against the unfightable silent killer of the country may this killer's claws be evaded by this woman may she make a full recovery and the doctors have wisdom stable hands and discernment beyond their understanding and training may the guiding hand of whatever power you believe in be upon them and may she make a recovery that shocks everybody cheers brother Thank you for reminding me of that, just in case. Johnny K198 stepped in to remind everyone to say hello to the resident Fed and their wife's boyfriend. Also, fuck them being able to use money they stole to sell debt to collections agencies and California being able to take all the money out of a bank account, put a levy on the never pick up the phone to figure it out. Hopefully, they will pick up before my subscription runs out. But much love, Rikay, to love your spirit and prote uh, protection of freedom. Holy shit. Johnny K, I hope you get that resolved as soon as possible. Whitney Connolly says, Joe Rogan has a guest request that I applied for you to go on and also have spoken to him about you to go on the show. And he said it was interesting. Well, cool. Thank you. Thank you. How did you speak to Joe? Like, how do you know Joe Rogan? How do you have a chance to talk to him? This guy says, is the country too far gone? We are fucked economically. Social tension is at its highest in forever. Russia attacks civvies and nobody does anything. Dems don't get killed in the election. Is either, he means defeated, not like literally killed. Either not YouTube safe or people are retarded. Uh, look, I don't think it's too far gone. I know that sounds naive, but I have faith in the resilience of the American people. Crusader Saracen says, first of all, Nick, how dare you address Brandon without addressing him by the title of Sheik? Bill says, if anyone calls me a fed, I jab him in the eyes and say, you are deceiver and an enemy of Allah. This guy says, tired of fed stealing your megahertz down the Netscape 3.0 for all your anti-government needs. Bill says, feds interrupting your stream. Use NordVPN uh, for the best streaming quality. No guard. You mentioned that you'd be interested in talking to Dave Smith a couple weeks ago. Now that you have a Twitter again, you can DM him at comic Dave Smith and other people should follow him there. Okay. I will send him a message. I will do that. Gooch says, I take my pre-law Academy kids for a visit to country County during the camp. It's 8 AM to 11 AM. And it feels like I've been sentenced to jail for six months, 18 months in County. Disgusting what they did to this dude. True. Uh, Karamachet says, uh, at Granola said, yay could do unbreaded straight up. Yeah. If yay wants to do unbreaded, I'd let him. Do you think I wouldn't let yay do unbreaded? I'd ask him to drop a beat. I'd be his hype man. Like, yeah. Kanye. Breaded, young Yeezy. Like, 
I'd be happy to do that shit all day. He could read, he could read a hundred pages. I don't care. This guy says nothing says revolution like lemon water. <laughs> this guy says, what was it? What, 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 what was, was it, it like, like to, to be, be falsely, falsely accused. <laughs> don't make fun of the man's audio. Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike says, Nick, please tell Brandon props from the Bay band machine head. Oh, machine head song Davidian. Thank you. Thank you for that. I remember machine head. This guy says, what was it like being an extra in breaking bad? And Ben SC says, uh, fucking hell. It's cool to hang with rednecks. Don't need to worry unless you hear banjos. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Frankie Two Fingers says, peeing lawyer song chased away the feds, lol. Uh, I think it literally ended up being the, I think it was the power cable maybe. Because sometimes, in my experience, wireless signals, Wi-Fi and, uh, you know, cell phone get stronger with uh with something plugged in maybe that's not true but it sure seemed true to me uh all right that i think is the show retro gamer 19 says do do something about your static and jack crow says caw, caw, caw. there we go guys thanks for hanging out with me tonight uh i gotta get up at like 8 a.m and take my kid into into school not like school school but activities i should say private activities related to their homeschooling there you go i gotta do that at eight in the morning it's a weird day i will see you guys tomorrow night adam krigler if i get some time tomorrow during the day i may do something fun on locals or twitch i would love to uh, i got dark tide so I'm looking to play that soon, but Adam Krigler tomorrow at night. Catch you guys soon. Have a good night. Peace. Peace. He drinks a fair bit, but you realize that It just helps get his noggin jogging along With his glass by his side and his kids asleep tight We'll hear some lost planning tonight With his microphone muted, we'll laugh at this blue moon Until he explains it's all part of the plan Watch his face become redder as he becomes better Raging at idiots from Twitter and Erland From the white shores of Nantes Hills of Glen Rivet. There's no one who plays the law better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed. Make the law what we have now. Oh, his lady is fair and she handles herself with the grace of one who has borne many children. As the wife of a lawman, she makes sure that he has the time and the place to provide for them there. So pour out an art bag about more of the frog. The spirits flow as the ones who get on their blood. So pour out a glass for the tea post on Twitter. It's me here lost planning tonight. From the white shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Levitt, there's no one who explains the thought better than me. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh, the guests are all planet folks from Doug T to Drexel. They bring their perspective and spice to the mix. But the reason we're here and the one that we cheer is the one who is showcasing us his career.
Shores of Man to the hills of Glen Limit. There's no one who explains the thought better than me. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law what we.